Now is the time to start earning more. Don't wait. Earn up to 5.20% APY on a high-yield 9-month personal or business CD. With a low $1,000 minimum and no maximum deposit, it's an even easier way to earn more. Plus, it's FDIC insured. Amogee Bank. Here, you grow. Take advantage of this exceptional 5.20% CD rate and open your account today. Visit a nearby branch or amogeebank.com slash CD eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. It's the last word before he takes the court. A Horn Frog Sports Network exclusive. Jamie Dixon live in the locker room right now. Here's Brian Estridge. We mentioned Danny Sprinkles' team, Utah State, your opponent here, Coach. This is a storied program over the years. Yeah, they win. And uh, Stu Morrill, uh, Con Smith, I think, was the guy way back when I started. Uh, and go down the list. Uh, Larry Stacy won yeah. games here. Uh, they went, and it's a home court. It's Utah. There's players in the state, and then they've always been able to get some guys in. They used to kill it on some junior college guys <laughs> that that that, uh, uh, that everybody tried to recruit, but uh, they ended up getting them and getting them in school and playing. But uh, um, you know, go down the list. Ryan Odom won, and 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 he moved on. Uh, it, it's important. There's players in the area. Uh, you know, good blend players uh, that know how to play. Uh, the fans, the crowds are right on top of you. Um, they buy games. They bring games in. Um, the league, they've been, they were in the Big West when I first got uh, uh, associated with them. I, you know, it's, there's a reason because everybody's won here. Yeah. So I, I don't know it well enough, but I got a hunch. It's crowd. It's, it's uh, home games. It's uh, uh, players in the area that kind of give them some continuity, know how to play. They can bring in some uh, scorers, athletes. Uh, there, there's a lot of reasons, I think, uh, but don't, no denying it. They win here. Yeah, Danny Sprinkle's done that, too. One at Montana State, which is a tough job, we know that, played there. I remember when he was a player with McDerm yeah. for McDerm back in the day. You know Danny well. You yeah. said, this this is an up-tempo team. They'll move, won't they? Well, they can score. They got four, you know skilled guys out there, and they're big runs. Yeah. They they want to get the ball inside of them early in offense, uh, late in offense, and everywhere in between. He uh, He's big. He's got a knack. He gets fouled. He likes contact. He'll throw it up there to go get it. Um, and they do a great job is facing the floor and getting the ball all four guys know that their job is to get the ball in him it's inside out it's a, a big man touch and then play from there he's a guy along with Darius Brown who came from Montana State would sprinkle Darius a point guard kind of makes him go huh? yeah I mean he's been around a little bit he's a sixth year guy's played a lot of games I mean uh, he, he wasn't one of those had some injuries he's played 32 yeah. 34 36 I mean like he's played a lot of games and had the ball in his hands and so you know uh, that's that's how you get better and a uh, good example of it. Uh, I think they had a couple of other guys from Montana State. So, yeah, they talk about the uh, new guys, but they've all played together and they've uh, um, played for the coach. When you're talking to guys around the Mountain West, they also talk about Mason Falsev, who's kind of a, a glue guy for them, an energy guy. He's a local product like you talk yeah, about. Yeah, those are the guys I think that make that program. Yeah. There's a, It's a combination of a couple things that I mentioned and, and those are the key. A lot of places don't have those guys laying around and then they get older uh, when they get back and uh, I think that's the secret uh, 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 formula to their uh, success over the years. All right, finally, what are you telling your group to be successful tonight? You got to do this. To be successful tonight, we've got to uh, defend. I mean, when I mean defend, we, we've got to be the aggressors. We've got to be uh, ball pressure. We've got to be uh, post defense. Uh, and then we got to dominate the glass. All right, go get them, Coach. All right, thank you. That's Jamie Dixon. His team set to take on Utah State. we got the starting lineups opening tip-off here from Indianapolis. Coming your way next after this timeout. 
Since the late 1890s, TCU athletes who excelled in their sport have been awarded the Block T letter as a symbol of success, and today the tradition continues. If you're a former TCU student athlete, the Block T Association is looking for you. The Block T Association brings former TCU athletes together in a number of programs and events, including the TCU Athletics Hall of Fame, mentoring programs for current TCU student athletes, team reunions, and our famous football tailgate parties. Get on the team today at blockt.tcu.edu. Hello everyone, this is Chauncey Franks with TCU Fellowship Christian Athletes. I want to invite you out to our TCU FCA Night of Champions Banquet. You're going to have the opportunity to hear from coaches such as Kurt Solos, TJ Bruce, Malcolm Kelly, Mark Tomadol, and others. But the highlight of the night is hearing from our student athletes the impact FCA is having on their life. The banquet is April 25th, doors open at 6 o'clock, program starts at 6.30 in the indoor practice facility. Go to tcufca.org for banquet information. Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at HopeFarmFW.org. Hi, everybody. It's John Denton for the Flying Tea Club. You know, college athletics is an ever-changing world, and the Flying Tea Club is keeping TCU ahead of the curve. The Flying Tea Club is the TCU name, image, and likeness collective, helping TCU student-athletes make a positive impact in the Fort Worth community. Whether it's making big plays or enhancing the Flying Tea Club's support of local charities, TCU athletes are making a difference on and off the field. Get on the team today and make your tax-deductible donation at flyingteaclub.com. Let's keep winning at flyingteaclub.com. Your pregame three-pointer. Three keys for a frog victory. Here once again is Colin Bodiger. As number nine seed TCU gets to take on number eight seed Utah State here in Indianapolis in the round of 64 of the NCAA tournament in just a few minutes. My first of the three keys to the game is for the Frogs to be more the more physical team and especially make Utah State star great Osaborg earn everything that he gets tonight. TCU has a deep bench and can rotate fresh bodies at Osaborg and their other star guard, Darius Brown, and try to wear them down. Osaborg averages over 35 minutes per game and Brown over 37 and the Aggies don't go very deep into their own bench. So TCU should be able to take advantage of Hopefully, some fresher legs as the game goes on. My second key to the game is for the Frogs to get back to pushing the ball to score in transition, where they still lead the nation in fast break points per game, even after only scoring one fast break point in their last game against Houston. If TCU can get Utah State to get out and run with them, advantage Frogs. The Aggies actually prefer an up-tempo game, so it'll be interesting to see if they actually try to run with TCU. But they haven't seen anything like how the Frogs can push the ball and finish in transition. So I actually think the Aggies will focus on making sure they take that away from the Frogs and perhaps not send as many players to the offensive glass. If that's the case, it leads me to my final key for the game tonight, and that is TCU needs to hold Utah State to one shot per possession. We see it time and time again, especially in NCAA tournament games, when a team gets an offensive rebound and kicks it out to a wide-open shooter who knocks down a three-pointer. Those can be demoralizing daggers and should be avoided at all costs. The Frogs have been strong on the boards this season, and they'll need another big effort on the glass tonight to advance to the second round and have a shot at number one seed, Purdue. All right, the Horned Frogs getting set to take on this Utah State team as we come to you live here from Indianapolis. And uh, this Gainbridge Fieldhouse is the home of the Pacers, by the way. It was built in 1999. You remember it originally was Conseco Fieldhouse, right? That's right. Uh, and uh, it seats about 17,724. There were 17,720 Purdue fans for the game that just ended. I think there were four Grambling fans here I saw. I think that's about right, unless they're counting our crew here, yeah. too. <laughs> and I'm anxious to see how uh, how this crowd holds up here for this second one. And who do they pull for? Because you may see a Purdue crowd 
stay around, pick a team that they think they can beat in round two and start to pull for them. So we'll see how this plays out here shortly here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. The Horn Frogs and the Purdue Boilermakers. What we did see, though, or excuse me, the Horn Frogs and the Unicola State uh, Aggies, what we did see out of Purdue, though, was a pretty amazing individual performance here uh, for the Boilermakers, Colin. Yeah, Zach Eady came out uh, and dominated from the get-go. He had a double-double about 10 minutes into this game already and ends up finishing with 30 points on 11 out of 17 from the floor and 21 rebounds, including nine offensive. That that point total could have been even better if he got to his typical uh, free throw percentage. He was only 8 for 14, probably the only uh, negative on his stat line tonight. And, and Dave Shook's back at our Horn Frog uh, Sports Network studios. Dave, you were doing some research. The last time we saw a 30 and 20 game in the NCAA tournament was what? Yeah, it was back in 1995 when you might remember the name Joe Smith playing yes. for Maryland finished with 30 and 20 playing against the Texas Longhorns in the NCAA tournament that year so that was actually the 19th ever 30-20 game in the history of the NCAA tournament and again the first in nearly 20 years for Zach Eady tonight how about that man yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a name from the past. Right oh, it there. is. Great player. <laughs> Great player. Great player. But t tonight you saw just how good he is. Now, it, it, it's interesting. He only had two other players in double digits at Purdue, both at 11 points each in Braden Smith and Trey kaufman Wren. So, And it's not a deep team. Only eight players scored. They rely heavily on the Pigman. No, there's no question about it. I mean, this uh, he's first team all yeah. all, player all league player of the year. Uh, two years in a row. Well, I don't think they've been named him yet this year, but he's likely the player sure. of the year again this year. So two years in a row effectively, and and he's just a load. I mean, yes. he, he you can't move him off of his spot. He's not just tall. He's also wide right. and, 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 and he's got a good base and he's strong. He's just he's a tough guard no matter who's guarding him. The guy guarding him tonight, Aku for Grambling, uh, we looked him up. He's 6'11", 255, right. and he looked like a midget next to him. Yeah, sure did. And I tell you, though, the Horned Frogs uh, here against this Utah State team, is uh, it, it, this is a group that uh, comes in. They're not crazy deep. We know that. Uh, but uh, they can be uh, athletic when they need to be out in the run game. And, and the Frogs have to get through this one, even begin to worry about the Purdue Boilermakers and this home court advantage that they'll have here in Indianapolis. Utah State, of course, winners of the Mountain West Conference. Uh, in the regular season. Uh, their wins, if you start to break down who they played, Colin, they've got some decent wins, they beat, but they're all in the Mountain West. They beat Colorado State, who was number 13 at the time. That was a home game. They won on the road at UNLV. They won on the road at Boise. And then some home wins against San Diego State and Boise and, and New Mexico. But then you start to look at the losses, and, and, and some of them can be glaring. They lose at Bradley in overtime early in the season. They lose by uh, 13 at New Mexico. They lose by 14 in San Diego State. Uh, Nevada beat them by 14 and then Colorado State in Fort Collins with a five-point victory over them. And, and in the Mountain West semis against San Diego State, they were up 34-17 in the first half at one point. All right, They found themselves up by seven at halftime. They end up losing 86-70. to 70. San Diego State poured it on in the second half against Utah State. Yeah, what I read about that game is that San Diego State just got really physical with yes. them. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, Frogs are going to certainly take note of and try to do the same thing tonight and try to replicate what San Diego State did in that second half. But all those losses you just mentioned, outside of the Bradley loss, all of those teams are NCAA tournament teams. Yes. Every one of them. So they have largely taken care and won the games that they're supposed to win right. and dropped a few against you know decent teams. Now, while the Mountain West has not showed very well in this NCAA tournament to this point, uh, with the league going one and four in the first five games with this sixth one yet to come, that still was enough for the committee to put six teams in the tournament. So they're all worthy. Uh, to get in. So those are a lot. So many have got a few losses against some tournament teams, but they also got five wins against tournament teams as well on that resume. All right, the Horn Frogs back here in Indianapolis. The last time they were there, Frogs lost to Butler, 86-73. Pinkle Fieldhouse was the site of that one. You remember that game? I do not. You don't remember that? That game was right after you graduated. It, that's right. Yeah, right after you okay. graduated, yeah. Uh, it was a, a tough ball game. By the way, Jamie Dixon's only coached in the, in the city of Indianapolis one time. That's amazing, actually. I know. I, I thought he would have been here a lot, but he's only done it one time. That, and, and they won at Butler when he was at Pitt okay. in the CBI. 
Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know the CBI was around when he was back at Pitt. It, it feels yeah. like a newer tournament. Right. And the and the reason why both of those teams who have great, great basketball tradition, Pitt and Butler, both of them had suffered tons of injuries all year long and finally got healthy at the very end but weren't good enough at that point record-wise to get in the NCAA or the NIT, but they felt like they needed to play. Thad Mata was the coach at Butler. Jamie Dixon was the coach at Pitt. They kind of got on the phone and said, let's do the CBI thing. Yeah. Let's and play in it. Get it's another good game. Yeah. yeah. And they did. And it. and it was an overtime game. It was uh, late in the year, obviously, because you're in March, and it was a warm day, and there was no air conditioning in, in oh, uh, Eagle Fieldhouse. So. so how did they decide where they were going to play? Did they let the CBI do they it? let the or, CBI or do Or did that. they, like, say, yeah, you know, I'll agree to play you guys, but let's flip a coin to see who gets the home oh, game. Oh, that's probably a good <laughs> yeah, It wouldn't be surprised in the CBI. If Our best out of five from the top of the key. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For the, uh, I like that. Thad Mata versus Jamie Dixon. So, all right, so that's your kind of history here. By the way, if you're thinking about history as far as TCU and Utah State are concerned, uh, they've only met two previous times. Uh, Utah State leads the series with two wins. Frogs have yet to beat the Aggies. Those two meetings were in 1960 and in 1982. Utah State won by 25 and 26 points against TCU in those uh, previous two meetings. And I got a text from our friend Bud Kennedy, who was with the Star Telegram was actually covering that story. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that he told, or he's covering that game, one of the things that Bud told me was it was a snowy day. This was in 1982. It was a snowy day. Last time TCU and Utah State played, he said his rental car broke down driving back to Salt Lake City. It was 15 degrees, and Killer Killingsworth had to stop the TCU bus to pick him up. And he said the bus door opened, and Killer said, we all voted on whether to stop to get you. I voted against it. <laughs> but they stopped and picked him up anyway and brought him back to Fort Worth. Here's what's great about that story also is this, that's before cell phones. Oh, yes. So they just happened to see a car on the, side, car of the, on the side of the road. And I don't know if he was out of his car trying to flag him down or not. But, <laughs> but, somehow, or maybe he just way. knew what he was in his, in his rental and was able to scoop him up. That was uh, very lucky. Yeah, that is uh, Bud Kennedy's story the last time the Horned Frogs at Utah State met here. All right, about to, ready to rekindle this one between TCU and Utah State. We've got a lot more to do here on our wrap-up, or on our pre-game show, I should say. Get you ready for this one, the Frogs and Utah State. We do that after this time out of the word from Orange Theory Fitness. Orange Theory, let's turn it up. Are you ready for the life-changing fitness experience that helps you redefine your limits? You are faster here, you are stronger here, and you get more results here. Because here, you have the coaches, community, and group energy coming together to push you forward every class with scientifically designed full-body workouts and technology to track your results and prove you're improving. Welcome to Orange Theory Fitness. Book a free workout today at orangetheory.com. See studio for details. Every child deserves health care designed just for them, and Cook Children's offers just that. They're more than just a health care system. They're your friends, your neighbors, and their parents, too. So they see the world through your eyes. They see what you're going through. By working together, they can help your child get the best care and support possible. Find a doctor near you at cookchildrens.org. There are those who wait for spring, and then there are Cadillac drivers who boldly inspire spring's arrival in stunning sedans poised to outrun winter or in stylish SUVs. Bringing together design and performance with such exuberance, they make every day feel like that first warm day of the year. So this spring, don't wait. Be among those who inspire boldness in bloom at the Cadillac Move Up sales event. Visit your Metroplex Cadillac dealers today. Dallas Fort Worth Roofing Company. Lon Smith Roofing is one of America's top 25 roofing companies and has been serving the DFW Metroplex for nearly 50 years. From our humble Fort Worth beginnings in 1974, we have grown our company with the simple formula of a commitment to excellence. Our founder, Lon Smith, believed that no matter how good we are, we can always do better. Lon Smith Roofing is committed to providing the finest Fort Worth and Dallas roofing products and the most trusted service in the industry. Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. 40 to 28. Nice look. Yeah, low. Ooh, nice. Hold on. Fairness with a jam. One dribble, two dribble stolen by PB. Who gets it off the time. And it goes. Are you kidding me? They're going to count it. Micah Peavy from three-quarter court. Game bridge.
College Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. This is the NCAA Tournament. TCU basketball is on the air. Here's Brian Eskridge. Live from the Circle City, Indianapolis, Indiana, we come to you. That's right, Gamebridge Fieldhouse, the site of this one. NCAA Tournament action, round one for the Horn Frogs as they get set to take on the Utah State Aggies. Frogs at number nine seed, 21 and 12 overall out of the Big 12. Utah State's the eight seed, Mountain West Conference regular season champs. They're 27 and 6. Heading into this ball game, we're going to get to the starting lineups, kind of clue you in on what this matchup looks like as we count you down to tip off here tonight from Indianapolis. But first, full day of March Madness underway, including some games that are, well, tipping it late here. Let's get an update on those as we head back to our Horn Frog Sports Network studios. And we do that now with Dave Choke. Dave. Thanks, Brian. Well, only a couple of spots remaining in this weekend's second round still up for grabs, and a couple of those in progress right now. We told you earlier, the top seed in the South region, the region, the Houston Cougars, the regular season champions out of the Big 12, taking on 16th seeded Longwood. One of the stories in this one, the big man for the Cougars, Juwan Roberts, who injured that leg in the semifinals of the Big 12 Conference Tournament, tried to give it a go in the title game, just was not able to go. He's in the lineup tonight for Houston, and so far so good for Roberts and the Cougars. Jamal Shedd leading the way early on in this one as Shedd has put up nine points to go along with three assists as the Cougars have a 23-9 lead over the Lancers about 13 minutes into the opening half in that one in Memphis at FedEx Forum. Also in action right now, this one taking part also in the South region as fifth-seeded Wisconsin is taking on 12th-seeded James Madison. The Dukes a 31-game winner, but as a 12th seed, that's a tall order for the Badgers who struggled a little bit down the stretch during the regular season, and so far it is the Dukes that have themselves the lead in this one. 21 to 16 is the score. Still about seven minutes left to play in the opening half of that one. The winner of that game will take on fourth seeded Duke, who took care of business against 13 seeded Vermont earlier today. The winner of the Houston Longwood game will get Texas A&M, who won a barn burner against Nebraska out of the Big Ten. 98 to 83 was the final score in that one. And then the other game still to come later on this evening, fifth seeded St. Mary's, 12th seeded Grand Canyon as part of the West region today out in Spokane oh, yeah, with the right. Gales, the regular season and tournament champions they don't have a out of the West Coast Conference looking out. to punch their ticket into the second round of the NCAA tournament where they would get an opportunity to take on what looks like it'll be fourth-seeded Alabama with the Crimson Tide just finishing up a 109-96 to win today over 13th-seeded Charleston out of the uh, Coastal Athletic Conference. So that's a look around it's the late, rest man. of the scoreboard here yeah. as we continue to wind down this opening round of the NCAA tournament. And now we're just about ready for tip-off as the Horn Frogs and the Aggies get set to go at it with a spot in the second round and a date with top-seeded Purdue on Sunday on the line in this one. And here to bring you the starting lineups and the call of the game, Colin Boddicker and the voice of the Horn Frogs, Brian Estridge. Thank you much, Dave Shook. Tremendous job here on Inside TCU Basketball. Ready to count this one down here. We're just minutes away, the Horn Frogs and the Utah State Aggies meeting here in Indianapolis. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both ball clubs. And let's start with Utah State, which will go with what they like to refer to as a four-guard lineup. It's not that, though, folks, because great Osabor, they list him as a W, a wing player, but he's really an interior guy, 6'8", 250-pound junior. He's out of Bradford, England, transferred from Montana State. He's their best player, 18 points and nine boards a game. He's Mountain West Conference Player of the Year, the Newcomer of the Year in that league. He's currently 42nd in the country in rebounding. He's got 13 20-plus point games all the years. Guys, a real force inside. Their offense runs through him. Great Osabor is his name. He wears number one. All right, the three guards are Darius Brown, the point guard. He's a 6'2 grad transfer. He's from Montana State. Started at Cal State Northridge where he played for Trent Johnson who left TCU, obviously. He's out of Pasadena, California, is Darius Brown. 12 points and four rebounds. He was first team all Mountain West Conference. Got a great assist to turnover ratio at 6.5 assists for every 1.9 turnover. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, Darius Brown starts at the point. Mason Falslev is an energy guy for them. He's a 6'3 freshman. He's a 21 year old freshman. Went on a Mormon mission. He's uh, out of Benson, Utah. Played at Skyview High School. 11 points and four rebounds. Spent a, a little over a year in Brazil, but this is a guy who comes in and brings a lot of energy for him. Ian Martinez is another good player, 6'3", senior. He's had a Costa Rica, 13 points, 4 rebounds, started his career at Utah, then at Maryland, now here at Utah State. He's the son of a coach. 
Good basketball players, Ian Martinez. And then Isaac Johnson starts at center. Seven foot, seven foot sophomore out of American Fork, Utah. Transfer from Oregon, six, uh, 6.4 points and 3.1 rebounds. For Danny Sprinkle in his first year, 27 and 6 at Utah State. He's 108 and 49 overall. Took over for his alma mater, Montana State, where he was a head coach for four years and there. Of course, you got four, two players from Montana State here on this roster for Utah State. So if you look at them on paper, they kind of have all the pieces, Colin, that you want for a tournament team. Yeah, there's no question about it. Probably the only thing that they're, the ingredient that they're really missing is consistent three-point shooting. And they got a couple of guys that can knock down at a decent clip, but there's, they're the only two. Whereas the Frogs obviously led the Big 12 this year in three-point three point, uh, three point percentage and have multiple guys that can knock down threes. Chuck O'Bannon's going to get the start for the third time. So the Horn Frogs with this lineup here tonight. Jameer Nelson starts at the point for Jamie Dixon's team. Jameer, of course, the 6'2 senior out of Hopperford, Pennsylvania. 11 points and three rebounds a ball game. Micah Peavy at the 2, 6'8 senior out of Duncanville. 11 points and five rebounds a ball game. Emmanuel Miller, the leading scorer, at 16 points and six boards as a 6'7 senior out of Scarborough, Ontario. Uh, joining him in the starting lineup here for this ball game today. We mentioned Chuck O'Bannon, the 6'7 senior out of Las Vegas at six points and two rebounds a ball game. And then in the middle, Ernest Uday, 6'11", sophomore out of Orlando, played at Dr. Phillips High School. The transfer from Kansas, four points and five rebounds for Ernest Uday. He will start as the man in the middle here tonight for the Horn Fox. Jamie Dixon in his 21st year, 488 wins overall, 160 of those have come in Fort Worth. He's one of nine head coaches with 15 NCAA appearances active today. He's been to three sweet 16s, went to an Elite Eight at Pitt in 2009 and would love to get back there when you yeah, talk to him. No doubt about it. You just got to survive in advance, win the first one. Horn Frogs are the nine seed. They'll be in the road purple uniform. Utah State the eight seed. They're in their home whites with a navy blue trim for this one. Jamie Dixon with some last-minute words. Our three officials, by the way, good crew here for this one. Roger Ayers, Anthony Jordan, and Scott Brown. Our standby official is James Hicks, should we need him. TV wrapping things up. Players making their way out on the court now. Frogs and Utah State as we tip this one off at 10.30 on the East Coast. Woo, baby. 9.30 Central Time. Everybody get your coffee going. That's right. Thanks for staying up late with us here tonight for this one. Uday's going to jump center for the Horn Frogs. Osabor will jump center for Utah State. Uday has won 23 of the last 28 tips. Ready to get it started with the veteran, Roger Ayers, to toss it in the air here. NCAA tournament for a school record third straight time in Indianapolis tonight. Tonight starts right now. And the Frogs win the tip, thanks to Ernest Ude. It'll be Jameer Nelson in the forecourt. Now to Micah PV, left-hand side to go Chuck O'Bannon. Out front now Nelson. Nelson, back it goes O'Bannon. They look a little high-low action to Ude and rolled out of it. Instead, Ude out front now to Miller. Miller left wing, gives it up now to Micah PV. PV to the free throw line, bounces for Jameer. Three-pointer starts it off for the Horn Frogs. Boy, very fluid on offense right out of the gate there. Everybody passing and cutting and doing exactly what they wanted to do offensively and ends up with a wide open shot for Jameer Nelson from the three point line. Good start for the Frogs here. We talked about the potential for Jameer to have a real breakout game in this one. Brown gets it up front now to Isaac Johnson, a big seven footer. Kicks it back in a corner to Darius Brown. He's matched up on Micah Peavy. Left hand wing, it goes Osabor down low. They get it for the seven footer to put it up. Miss it. Rebound knocked out of bounds. Off of Emmanuel Miller as he and Isaac Johnson battle for it. Johnson, I don't think he anticipated <laughs> Jameer Nelson com uh, contesting that at the rim there. And sure enough, he does and, and uh, misses the bunny there, but he's able to knock the ball off of Miller. Foul away for the ball here. Peavy and Uday were both there wrapped up with Ian Martinez. And this one's going to be on Micah Peavy. Grabbed a hold of the jersey. Utah State with the basketball. That's a first-team foul charge on the Horn Frogs. Olsenborg gets the inbounds. Uday's got it. 
at the right wing. Skips it cross court now to Brown. Extra pass back out front. It comes running in traffic. Knocked away from Voslev. And the Frogs back the other way with it. Yeah, Frogs, nice rotation to get back there. Albana going baseline. Bumped and fouled. Voslev whistled for the foul here. The freshman. A little push of Chuck O'Bannon, first team foul charge in Utah State. Yeah, it's probably fortunate for Utah State because O'Bannon had found Peavy wide open in the corner and knocked down a three. And bounce to come from Jameer Nelson. Nelson sends it out front. Peavy goes high to get it down. Peavy out top around fall slip, pulls up. Free throw line jumper doesn't go. Try to follow his own shot. Miller with a rebound. He'll fire it from the free throw line and score. And the Frogs with an early 5 nothing lead over the Aggies. Yeah, you can see the Frogs are really going to be aggressive going to the offensive glass. They had 30 offensive boards in the last game against Houston. Ball Keeping that going so far. Pushes to the rim and misses a running one-hander. Frogs back the other way. Here's Nelson stepping through. Put it up. And Johnson blocked it back. The other way comes Martinez into Miller. Miller got a piece of it in a foul. Yeah, great hustle by Miller, though, to get back to even contest that play. And I like the energy from TCU early in this game. No easy baskets for Utah State. Everything's being contested at the rim. Going to make them earn it at the free throw line here. Free throw line now will go Ian Martinez, the senior, out of Costa Rica. 86% free throw shooter. At the line for two. First one is good. Utah State's on the board. 5-1. TCU leads it right now on the Aggies. Yeah, Martinez was taking it. It was a long sprint for him down the floor there, too. He was yes. taking all of his 10 seconds here at the free throw line. He's also kind of working his wrist there at the line as well. I wonder if he got bumped. Second effort here for Martinez. Made a both. 5-2 Frogs here early. Nelson walks it across the March Madness logo here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Nelson out front, Miller. Miller gives it off to O'Bannon. O'Bannon steps back from the left elbow, gives it back between the circles now to Miller. Right hand side it goes Jameer Nelson. Nelson corner right now to Chuck O'Bannon. O'Bannon back out top, it goes Nelson again. Nelson working on Brown. Brown picks his pocket. Here comes Darius back the other way. Dishes false left for the lay in. Good. Yeah, you can see Brown's a really good player. He got, a, got his hand in there and picked Nelson's pocket, but then also ran that break to perfection, drew PV to him, and dropped it off the ball for the easy layup. 159 starts for Brown. He's a vet. Here's O'Bannon, baseline, follow away jumper, got that one to go from nine feet away. Postseason Chuck is here. Yeah, you got to like him making that first shot of the night. Falslev again to the rim, up off the glass, and scores it. How many times have we seen Falslev, Mason Falslev, around the rim here early on, Colin. Yeah, he's getting to the basket early, and, the, and Utah State, that was a push. They're trying to run with the Frogs here early on. We heard he was their energy guy, and you see it already. Right-hand baseline again, O'Bannon stumbling, kicks it off in the corner left. Now to Nelson, extra pass, Miller for three. E-Man scores at 10-6, Frogs. Yeah, Frogs really efficient right now on offense, getting good looks every time down the floor. Three minutes into this first half, Darius Brown holds out front. Skips it corner left now to Martinez. Catch, shoot from the corner. That one doesn't go. Flying through the air was Johnson and knocked this one out of bounds. TCU will have it now. Out of bounds off of the seven-footer Johnson. He transferred from Oregon. He grew up just outside of Salt Lake in American Fork. Nice contest there from Micah Peavy. Running all the way out to the corner. Xavier Cork into the lineup for the first time. Comes in for Ernest Uday. Avery Anderson comes in now. He is in for Jameer Nelson. Anderson with the left elbow. Kicks it out now to Xavier Court. Court sends it right-hand side to Peavy. Peavy at the wing right. Dribbles back out front. Here's Anderson. Kicks it back. Miller step back three again. Emmanuel, that one doesn't go. Court fighting for it, but Falslev takes it from him. Yeah, I thought Court had a beat on that yeah. one. Also really uh, elevated to go get that one. Nice play by him. Brown skips a corner right. Catch here. Martinez goes baseline. Steps through a double team. Sends it back out front. Left alone is the seven-footer. He can shoot the three. Johnson unable to convert there. Back the other way comes Avery Anderson. Brown wanted the travel. Chuck catches right wing. Behind the arc, he'll fire the three-pointer. That one rims out for him. And a rebound now to Osamor. Good look at it for Chuck. Yeah, still a nice look. They'll take it every time. Easy pass. Kicked off here by Micah Peavy. Peavy steps in the passing lane, comes up with it, feeds it off Miller down the lane. He goes, and he's fouled here. Osabor is going to be the guilty party. It's going to be his first team foul number two on Utah State. And Emmanuel Miller is going to go to the free throw line with the Frogs trying to expand this 10-6 lead right now. Yeah, nice job by dropping off. Peavy, first of all, ran through a passing lane. Easy interception for him going the other way, and Frogs transition the other way. 
Nice little drop off pass to Miller and catches Osibor with his feet not squared to him. Gets the contact. Miller ends up with a free throw on here. Miller's free throws off the mark. Emmanuel's an 82% free throw shooter. Jacoby Cole's the only frog to have played here in this arena. He did it as a freshman with Butler. When Butler took on Indiana here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse, he had 10 points and four boards in 21 minutes on four or five shooting. Butler lost that game 68-60, by the way. Johnson checks out of the lineup for Utah State as Khalifa Sako comes into the lineup. Now watch that guy in warm-ups. He is super athletic. Yes. Miller's free throw was good. Second effort good for Emmanuel Miller. 11-6. Horn Frogs lead by five. 16 minutes to play here in this first half, and Osabor will walk it up now. I'm good with that. If they can get Osabor to bring the ball up before, that's a little extra energy taken out of him. Keeps it into court, into the lane. Mystic got his own rebound. Hesitates up off the glass. That's what he does best. He is awkward, Colin, at times, but finds himself around the rim. Boy, there's no question about that. The Frogs, Court did a great job defending him there. Just nobody came back to, to get that loose ball, and it fell right to Osabor under the basket for an easy land. First two of the game for him. He averages 18. Miller's pass deflected. Martinez comes up with it. TCU's lead is three. Utah State with the basketball. Darius Brown's got it out front now. Brown working between the circles. The Pasadena native. Going to pull the trigger on a three to tie it. In and out. And Cork flying through. Gets a defensive rebound. Yeah, nice job by Cork working back down to get that board. Here's a push from Avery Anderson. All the way to the rim goes double A. Missed it, but there's a tip followed by Emmanuel Miller. They're going to get the foul first, though. And Anderson's going to be at the free throw line for a pair. I think they're going to call this one. It's on Saka, and they will. I think that's right. Timeout on the floor here early on. The Horn Frogs with a three-point advantage on Utah State. 11-8. TCU leads it here in Indianapolis. So the Utah State Aggies back we come courtside after this timeout. And a word from our friends at Albertsons. Tom Thumb is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Tom Thumb for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries online and save over $300 weekly with digital coupons all in one place. Plus, earn rewards every time you shop in store or online and redeem for free groceries or gas savings. Download the Tom Thumb app or go to TomThumb.com to start saving today. Tom Thumb, DFW's grocer since 1948. Not to brag, but Progressive's Name Your Price tool is mankind's greatest tool ever. Even better than the wheel. Sure, without the wheel, we wouldn't have modern transportation or funny videos of dogs riding skateboards. But without the Name Your Price tool, we wouldn't have easy access to auto insurance options based on our budget. And, well, cars do need wheels. They also need insurance. And insurance never goes flat. Learn more about the greatest tool ever. The Name Your Price tool at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Fifteen twelve to play here in this first half. Horn Frogs with an 11-8 lead right now in Utah State. We talked to Jamie Dixon earlier in the week about his team and their improvement down the stretch. And we've changed some things, so I've I've adjusted. Um, they've picked some things up. I've pushed them. I've challenged them. I've coached them. I've yelled at them. Um, I've tried everything. And, uh, but I think we're, we're, we made some strides. So uh, I think we can do some things um, better uh, down the stretch here. And yeah, he's always pushing them, always wants them to be better. They have gotten better defensively down the stretch. Oh, there's no question. You, you, know, you find your, your what buttons you can push with guys, especially with such a veteran team, guys that like to be coached. Um, and, and and sometimes coach hard like they respond to that and, and it appears that they have thus far down the stretch here they've gotten better defensively and you know guys want to win this is their third trip for five of the guys on the team third trip in the NCAA tournament like this is their shot uh, with a good team 
This broadcast of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the NCAA through Westwood One. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of the NCAA and Westwood One is strictly prohibited. 15-12 to play here in this first half. Brian Estridge, Colin Boddicker with you courtside, our producer-engineer on site. Is Kyle Cross, Dave Shook is back at our Horn Frog Sports Network studios, and Ray has a con for this one. Free throw line right now is Avery Anderson, 79% free throw shooter. First one's good. I really like Avery Anderson getting a couple of free throws early in this game. He's been struggling a little bit offensively the last few weeks of the season, so getting some easy uh, shots early. Misses useful. the second free throw. Cork is there to follow it for a putback lay in good. And the Frogs up by six now, 14-8. to eight. If Xavier Cork can give you that kind of energy off the bench, it could be a big night. No, no question about it. He's had good games in the NCAA tournament as well himself, yes. so there's an opportunity for a steal. The Frogs just missed it. Osobar may have passed that one to himself. Brown just dribbled it off the foot of Tennyson, and it's going to stay with Utah State. Like Tennyson being aggressive out there, defending. Jimmy Dixon with the conversation with Anthony Jordan on the sideline with the officials. And bounce comes to Darius Brown. Ten of the shot clock now for Utah State. Frogs lead it. 14 to 8. Brown penetrate. Nice dish. Could not finish though with a jam from Sacco. And back the other way comes the Frogs. Tennyson. Avery Anderson never put it on the floor. Two steps and a lay in. And TCU leads at 16 8. Boy, it came out of nowhere from the backside. Two great find from Tennyson right there. Speaking of big games, Avery Anderson had some of the NCAA tournament as well. He had 21 against Liberty. He had 16 against Oregon State when playing for Oklahoma State. Martinez, extra pass down low, and there is the dunk for Sacco. That goes Khalifa on the board for the first time. Yeah, Sacco wasn't going to miss that one. He pump faked the guy right past him, and he was nobody near him. He wasn't going to miss that one. 16 to 10 right now. It's a six point lead for TCU. Miller now between the circles, except your court. Gives it up, Anderson. Nice pass, gets it down low to Miller. Here comes a double team from Utah State. Miller pitches out of it, though, right-hand side to Anderson for three. Back of the iron, no good to the rebound out of false low. He'll push one-on-one -on, -one on Tennyson, put it up on the glass, missed it. There's Miller to clean the glass for TCU. Yeah, TCU did a nice job working back right there on defense again. Another push here from Tennyson. Into the lane, he goes for the floater. Trey Tennyson on the scoreboard. That's a good sign as well. The Frogs up eight, 18 to 10. Well, you can see TCU trying to get up and down the floor, and Utah State trying to run with them, but... If they, don't, if they don't finish on their end, TCU's getting out and scoring on their end. It's going to be a good night for the Frogs. Danny Sprinkle with a set play here. He's got Darius Brown, his senior point guard, out front with it. Gives between the circles now to Osabor. Osabor going to pull the trigger on a three over Cork. Flat footed. Missed it. Long rebound, though. Sacco over Cork. Dark Coles gets it. Gets it down low. Osabor scored a foul. This one's going to be on Xavier Cork. A little late getting over with Xavier. Jamie Dixon yelling at him. Yeah, that's a, that's a missed block out from Jacoby Coles. He turned around to get the rebound. Sacco stayed out there about 15 feet from the basket and it ended up being a long rebound. Yep. Coles has got to actually step to Sacco and put a body on him all the way out there. That Even ball just that went, far out. It went over his head. It was a long shot, long shot, long rebound, yep. right? So it bounced over him, ends up with a uh, and one opportunity here for Osibor. Six point ball game, 18 to 12 right now. Osibor at the line, missed it and rebound Coles. Osibor is a 63% free throw shooter. Anderson out front looks at a screen from Tennyson. Avery step back, fires another three. That one is an air ball saved, fortunately, by the Frogs. Micah Peavy does so out front to Tennyson. His floater in the lane does it go. Tennyson had it, lost it, false live. Kate comes up with it. Frogs with a couple of looks here that didn't go for him. A couple of good looks there, too. And Tennyson almost came up with his uh, own miss there. Osibor around Uday. Reverse layup, scored and a foul. Avery Anderson is going to be whistled for the foul here. Yeah, Brown got away with a uh, moving screen right there. He kind of turned around and uh, just kind of stuck his uh, backside out a little bit. It picked off Uday. And then Osibor goes to the basket, picks up his dribble, and does a little bunny hop yep. as well. You know, If they're going to let him play, I, I get it, but... Free throw line goes Osabor again for another opportunity to three-point play. It's a four-point game right now. 18-14 TCU leads. Osabor at the line. Scores that one. 
All of a sudden, he's starting to wake up a bit. He's got seven. Yeah, seven and a couple boards here. Just only a little over seven minutes into this game, so he's uh, he's on he's on pace to do, be above his average already. And you can see him. He's taking some deep breaths right now on the defensive side of the ball. Here's Nelson out front. Tennyson gives it back now to Jameer. Jameer checks back into the lineup. Back it comes to Trey. Nice look down low. Ernest Ude puts it on the floor and kicks it back to Nelson again. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. Nelson to the left-hand wing. Back out front, Tennyson. Right-hand side, Peavy. Ten on the shot clock. Peavy wrap around, reverse layup. Score that one as he worked himself around the Duje, who's just checked into the lineup. Yeah, boy, the Frogs got fortunate there. The tough pass from Tennyson trying to get it to Ude. Been, saved the possession, and Peavy bails him out with a tough finish on the other end. Brown skips the corner left to Duje, the Coastal Carolina transfer. Play with Isam Mustafa there. Uduje in traffic. Tennyson doing a nice job walling him off. Back out front, it comes down. Osabor with eight on the shot clock. He's going to work on Ude. Kicks it left-hand side. Jackson for three. Score that one. As Javon Jackson off the bench, a sophomore out of Houston. A 37% shooter from behind the arc gets that one to go. Yeah, but he's one of the few guys that can knock down threes for them. And he does right there. Peavy with it out front. Now to Nelson. Nelson out. At the top, between the circles, working on Brown. Brown wanted to travel, I think. Here's Coles, right-hand side, it goes Peavy. In traffic, steps through, drug his foot, travel here. Turns it over to Utah State. Jamie Dixon not happy, time out of the floor. 11.22 to play here in this first half. The Horn Frogs up to 20-18 to 18 right now. They lead it on Utah State. Back, we come after this local timeout here on the Horn Frogs Sports Network from Learfield. There are those who see the world through a different lens, who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid, but by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders to think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time to lead on. Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at HopeFarmFW.org. The TCU Frog Club brings generous and loyal supporters together in support of more than 500 Horned Frog student-athletes. Frog Club donors help TCU athletes reach their fullest academic and athletic potential through philanthropic investments in scholarship, the TCU endowment, capital projects, and our sport-specific groups. Become a Frog Club donor and gain exclusive access and premium benefits. Memberships start as low as $100 per year. Visit tcufrogclub.com to join today. Two to play here in the first half. Horn Frogs up two on Utah State. 20 to 18 as we bring you back to Indianapolis. Frogs 8 of 15 for the field to start. Utah State 7 of 16. TCU out rebounding the Aggies. 11 to 7 to open. Six points for Emmanuel Miller to lead the way. Great Olsamore has seven for Utah State. By the way, big win for women's tennis today. They beat KU for zip. They're now 5-2 in Big 12 play. Frogs trying to get their 22nd win of the year here. And this one against Utah State. Colin, any numbers standing out to you right now? Yeah, Frogs up to six points on the fast break. That was the key to the game. See if they can get out and then try to hold Utah State to a lower number, obviously, on that. And they're at four right now. But Frogs with four early turnovers here in this game, that's a number that they're going to want to keep an eye on and not, not commit too many turnovers. Uh, you got to like the effort on the boards thus far, though, uh, plus four. We talked to Jamie Dixon about uh, great Olsenborg. Starting to heat up a little bit. He's got seven points and a couple of boards here for Utah State. Jamie was high on this big man for the Aggies. And face and drive it. He's a playmaker, somewhat undersized, but doesn't play like, plays big. And uh, so he's the thing, but they have old and balanced uh, around him, too, as well. Yeah, he's 6'8 with long arms. And I think that's an, that helps him play bigger. But he's also 250 pounds. Hard to move him off the block. No, there's no doubt about it. And he, he's not like the most the most agile guy in the no, world not either. At all. But he but he's definitely skilled. 
and uh, gets to his spots and where he wants to go. Patient, lets the plays develop. He's, 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 uh, he's so far shown that he can pass out of double teams and, and pass out of uh, trouble. So good, uh, well-rounded player for sure. Out of the timeout, Utah State's going to have the basketball, and the Frogs are going to apply some pressure in the backcourt. Darius Brown, that point guard, gets it across quickly to Osabor. Osabor with a lob, and they break that pressure. How easy was that? I think Utah State studied up on what TCU tries to do in the full court. That was a dunk. No, TCU, uh, it was a mix-up. Emmanuel Miller thought that he was guarding somebody up front because he ran from the back and didn't see uh, Sacco behind him. Uh, so that was just a complete mix-up from Emmanuel Miller on that one. PV for three. Wing left scores that one. Frogs back up by three, 23-20 as Utah State had tied it. It's a good sign for PV2 to knock yep. down that shot. You like when he gets those going. Under 11 minutes to play here on this first half. 10.48 left to be exact. Frogs with that three-point advantage. Nice overplay by Jameer Nelson. Swipes the ball away on the pass intended for Brown. And it's going to stay with the Aggies, though. And Aguje will inbounds. A junior out of London, England. So we mentioned he played at Coastal Carolina two years there with Isam Mustafa at 39 starts in Myrtle Beach. Brown out front now. Another lob. This time Soko brings it down and goes straight up over Micah Peavy for the dunk. I mean, this is part of the, the MO for TCU. Sometimes big guys get loose underneath. And you, know, you think of a, a Misi from Baylor uh, as one of the guys. Like TCU's going to have to shut that down. As Utah State now shows a zone here against TC, which TC's had trouble with. This is a 1-3-1 look that Nelson will fire the three against. It doesn't get it. Utah State did this to try to slow things down against Colorado State earlier in the year. It was very effective. But then Utah State in the transition throws it away. Osamore over the head of his intended target, Javon Jackson. Well, you can see that Coach uh, Sprinkle has definitely watched plenty of film yes. on some of TCU's struggles offensively. And it has been against a zone just like this, especially Baylor comes to mind. Danny Sprinkle, coach of the year in the Mountain West this year, was a great player at his alma mater, Montana State, back of the day where he played for the great Mick Durham. Corner left, they get it, O'Bannon for three. Chuck at the side of the backboard. It went out of bounds off of Micah Peavy, who takes a shot in the face from either the ball or an elbow. I'm not I, sure. I, I think it might have been an elbow, and, and the refs should look at every time. If they're going to call, I've, we've seen so many reviews already in the yeah. NCAA tournament. Anybody takes a shot up top, and I don't know why they're not looking at this one. They may be. Let's know. They're not going to. And, and G Coach Dixon's asking him, like, head shot above the uh, the head. Yeah. Everything else been looked at. But I don't think it was anything malicious. Certainly didn't look like it from our angle. No, Peavy stays out there. Out of the top, they kick it left-hand side here to Uduje. He brings it back between the circles now for Utah State. Frogs lead by one, 23-22. Aggies have never led in this one. Out front with it is Brown. Brown in traffic. Step back jumper. That one's short. Rebound Peavy for the Frogs. There's no, there's no way that Brown knew that uh, uh, O'Bannon was going to contest it that well. Miller out front now. Nelson left-hand side O'Bannon. O'Bannon looked down low. Miller with it. E-Man gives it up now to Peavy. Peavy skip it. Right-hand wing. They go Chuck O'Bannon. Pulls up baseline jumper. No roll there. And Uduje. With a rebound. I think initially he wanted to look for Uday for an alley-oop, and they got that got taken away at the last second. Jackson's floater from 10 is short. Rebound out of bounds off of Utah State. Frogs get a break there. That one might have been off of TCU. I don't know. Coach Dixon was over on the sideline saying, don't touch it, don't touch it, let yeah. it go. So Maybe he saw had a better angle there. Or, or did. he did a better sales job. No question. Esau Mustafa's going to get into the lineup now for the first time. We didn't see Esau in the Big 12 tournament. Observing Ramadan, but also took a shot in practice to the mouth. Had to have a tooth replaced. Ouch. Yes. Mustafa out there now. He's matched up on the seven-footer. Isaac Johnson. Nelson and Trey Tennyson, your guards. O'Bannon, Emmanuel Miller, and Mustafa. Up against this defense of Utah State. Here's Mustafa with it. Johnson on him. Hands it off now. Tennyson. Roll out of it. One-hander doesn't go for Trey. Mustafa was open. I thought he might throw the lob to him, but instead it's Brown back the other way. Skip it right-hand wing. Martinez in traffic. Sends it left-hand side. Jackson out front now. Brown 
Dallow Osipor over Mustafa. The jump hook doesn't go in the rebound out of Chuck O'Bannon. Yeah, Frogs, nice job defensively scrambling right there. Nobody was guarding the guy they should be, but everybody picked somebody up, which is the most important thing. Here's tennis at left-hand wing. It goes O'Bannon again. Chuck pumps, sends it down low down to Mustafa. Out front it comes Nelson for a three. That's where he started the game. That three doesn't go. Mustafa knocks this one out of the hands. Of Isaac Johnson, it's going to stay with Utah State. That one goes out of bounds when we come back. Timeout on the floor, 7.56 left here in this first half. Frogs by one, Utah State making it difficult on TCU. 23-22 right now is our score. Back we come courtside in Indianapolis after this timeout. A word from Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. I mean, you could put that money towards concert tickets for your daughter to see that singer who sings about painful breakups. And one song will inspire your little beauty to break up with that beast she's dating, Brian. Instead, she'll date someone who's nice and worthy of her love, not someone who addresses you and your spouse as, bro. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates not available in all states. Every child deserves health care designed just for them. And Cook Children's offers just that. They're more than just a health care system. They're your friends, your neighbors, and their parents too. So they see the world through your eyes. They see what you're going through. By working together, they can help your child get the best care and support possible. Find a doctor near you at cookchildrens.org. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Today's game is brought to you by Progressive. See why over 28 million drivers trust Progressive to stay protected on the road. See for yourself at Progressive.com. 7.56 to play here in this first half of Horn Frogs. Lead it by one, 23-22 right now. On Utah State, stations list pause. 10 seconds for station identification. Here on the Horn Frogs Sports Network from Learfield. In Indianapolis, we come with the Frogs with this one-point lead. Jacoby Coles has been quiet early on, but we had a chance to talk to him earlier in the week. And I, I kind of play the cut for you, Colin, because I, I think Jacoby really gets to the heart of what college athletics is all about here. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about the transfer portal and the NIL and all kinds of conference realignment and, you know, expanding the tournament. But listen to Jacoby Coles here. This, to me, is why we play the game. You know, now that I'm here and now that, you know, this is my third time going to the tournament, um, this is my, you know, fourth year playing college basketball, um, I give all the glory to God and I thank him for all the blessings that I have. And, you know, it's exciting. And, you know, I'm just joyful that I get to have this experience for sure. How about that? I'm just joyful that I get to have this experience. That's what it's all about. Right? I love it, man. Take, taking it all in yeah. uh, and then, you know, coming out here and giving your all and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Coles with a breather right now. The Frogs with Tennyson and Nelson, along with Chuck O'Bannon, Emmanuel Miller, and Isam Mustafa, the five of the floor for TCU. Martinez and Brown, Falslev, Johnson, and Osibor, the five of the floor here for Utah State. It's a starting lineup on the floor right now for the Aggies. They're not nearly as deep as the Frogs who have already played 10 in this ball game. Osibor behind his head. Falslev couldn't get the shot off. Nelson with a nice recovery there for the Frogs. Leads a break, but threw it right in the hands of Brown. Back the other way. Darius on Nelson for the lay-in. Aggies score it, and the Aggies lead for the first time, 24-23. Yeah, I get TC's wanting to be uh, pushing the ball and, and try to be aggressive offensively here, but sometimes you don't want to try to... That was going to be... We had a great angle on that pass. That was going to be a have to be a pinpoint yes. place pass and it ends up a easy basket the other way for Utah State. You've got to avoid those types of plays. Well, Bannon right hand side he, it was going to take a Phil Mickelson nine iron wasn't it? Here's Nelson 
Left hand side now to O'Bannon. Here's Nelson. Gets it back. Fires another jumper that doesn't go. Miller's able to keep it alive, though, on a tap to Tennyson and get it right back to E-Man for three. And Emmanuel Miller scores that one. He's got nine for the Horn Frogs. Well, I love that he caught that. He knew that shot was going up right away, that the defender wasn't going to be able to close out in time, so he had all the confidence in the world that that was going to go up, just like a practice shot. Darius Brown with it out front now. Works against Nelson. Brown to the right-hand side. Darius hands it off. Here's Martinez. Martinez in traffic, working against Olsabor. Backs it in on Mustafa and scores. I told you it's not pretty, Colin, but it worked for him. Boy, it's it's, it's a lot of banging down there, and he somehow got, it looked like he got under uh, Isam Mustafa's uh, arm a little bit and just kind of flicked it up there and still made the shot. Tough shot for Olsabor. Ties this one at 26, 619 to play. Miller, turnaround, baseline, jumper goes. He's in double digits. Is Emmanuel Miller. He's got 11 points here early on as e in double digits for the 89th time in his career. Well, you got to love him getting going early here in this game as, as Coach Jamie Dixon implores his team to really get after here on defense this possession. Martinez has it slapped away by O'Bannon. Gets it right back. Puts it on the floor. Got O'Bannon in the air. The step back jumper goes. And that's going to drive Dixon crazy because he knows O'Bannon likes to go for that shot block. Yep, and that's that's a play that, I mean, more players, I'm shocked, don't do it. A little, little pump fake like that. And O'Bannon commits a turnover. Falslev comes up with a steal from him on the pass. Dribbles all the way to the free throw line. Leaves it off for the seven-footer. Works his way to the rim and scores. And a timeout taken by Jamie Dixon. And Coach Dixon's not happy with O'Bannon. A, 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 a mistake there on the defensive end. And then come down and compound and just throw the ball straight to Utah State. TCU has got to get rid of the turnover bug. It's what derails their games. Uh, in the games that they struggle in, and they've already got six now in this game. 30-second timeout that becomes a full. We'll take it with them. 5.30 to play here in this first half now. 30-28. to 28. Utah State leads it to the Frogs. Zach would come courtside in Indianapolis after this timeout. A word from Orange Theory Fitness. Orange Theory, let's turn it up. Are you ready for the life-changing fitness experience that helps you redefine your limits? You are faster here. You are stronger here. And you get more results here. Because here, you have the coaches, community, and group energy coming together to push you forward every class with scientifically designed full-body workouts and technology to track your results and prove you're improving. Welcome to Orange Theory Fitness. Book a free workout today at orangetheory.com. See studio for details. TCU teams and traditions are legendary. Our team at Strategic Wealth Designers are proud to be a partner of TCU Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Horn Frogs Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Horn Frogs. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Inside the Marit Studios, it's Dave Shook as the Horn Frogs trailing Utah State by two right now, 30 to 28. We'll get you back out to courtside in Indianapolis in just a moment. But first, quick check of the Coors Light scoreboard. Everything else in the late night session is underway right now, including in the second half. We were have an upset alert right now with 12 seeded James Madison, a 31 game winner in the regular season, but currently holding a 35 to 20 lead over the fifth seeded Wisconsin Badgers as they get underway. Start of the second half in that one with the Dukes looking to pick up the upset and move into the second round. Also in action, top-seeded Houston in the south region playing at FedEx Forum in Memphis, taking on the 16-seeded Lancers from a long one, and this one's been all Cougars right from the jump. LJ Cryer leading the way for Houston 13 points, and Houston has a 43-16 to lead at the break, and just underway, the long-awaited late-night matchup in Spokane between the fifth-seeded St. Mary's Gales in the west region against 12-seeded Grand Canyon. That one just underway about four minutes in with Grand Canyon holding a 7-6 to lead as we send you back out to courtside in Indianapolis. And the voice of the Horn Frogs, Brian Estrich. Thank you much, Dave Shook. 30 to 28 right now. Utah State with a two-point advantage. 
the former Horned Frogs. Frogs started out great in this ball game. What's been the difference here of late, Colin? Uh, turnovers. Uh, Frogs are now up to six turnovers in this game, and just easy. It ends up being easy baskets on the other end. Utah State's made four of the last four attempts, but two of those were easy layups off of turnovers. Frogs have just have got to take care of the ball and not. When you turn it over, don't give it to them going the other way. Nice and easy layups. Yeah, Utah State has taken those six turnovers and turned them into eight points. You can see the emphasis as well as getting in the paint for the Aggies. you got 24 points in the paint here already against the Frogs. Anderson, left-hand wing. Avery's into the lineup along with Tennyson. Uday returns as well. And Jacoby Coles. Here's Avery. Lost a handle on it. Loose on the floor. Frogs go after it. Anderson saves it. Miller, six on the shot clock. Skip it over Tennyson. Pump fakes and is bumped by false level. Ran at him. Well, Knew he was a shooter. He had to get out there. No doubt about it. And Tennyson has pulled that trigger numerous times this year. So just an extra little head fake. And he had the uh, just a couple seconds left on the shot clock. But that worked out beautifully for the Frogs uh, after the uh, looking not too good there for a minute. A new 20 on the shot clock now. The foul on Falslev was his second team foul, number four on Utah State. Tennyson's thrown like three or four head fakes so far in this yeah. game and not shot a three. Trying to get to the basket more. Here's Coles putting it on the floor, taking it to the basket. He pumps, went up high, missed it. Ute there to follow it for the Horn Frogs. Yeah, nice backside. Uh, two guys stepped over to try to stop the drive from Coles and left the backside rebound wide open for Ute to come in for the easy slam. Darius Brown, there's a lob. Martinez goes up, has to bring it down, bounces it down low. Uduje able to follow it as the Frogs were watching. Yeah, the Frogs, I mean, it's got to be every possession, every second of the game. You've got to be, you got to want it more every possession. Sure. You can't turn around and watch a guy catching a lob, falling down out of bounds, and drop a pass to his teammate right under the basket for a layup. Anderson almost has it stolen away. Instead, it goes to Kobe Cole's baseline. He goes, puts it up short. That's the second one that he's missed close. A late whistle here. Bells Jacoby out. He's going to get to the free throw line. They're going to whistle the foul. And I think this is going to be on Sacco. I think that's the right call. There's a reason that Coles wasn't able to get that ball up on the glass. Jacoby goes to the free throw line now. Free throw good for Coles, who spent a year here in Indianapolis. And Butler has played here, as we talked about before. At Game Bridge Fieldhouse, the home of the Pacers. Jacoby's going to get a second free throw here. The lead is one right now for Utah State at 32-31. Micah Peavy just back into the game, too. He had a nice little rest, so good opportunity for him to finish strong here in this first half. Comes in for Trey Tennyson. 4-10 to play here in the first half. Darius Brown brings it across the timeline. Darius matched up on Avery Anderson, gives it now. Holds the board. It works between the circles. Holds the board. Picks up his dribble. Nice job there. Uday to close in on him. Now it goes to Martinez. Frogs in scramble mode. Martinez working his way to the rim and somehow scores with the left hand. He went through five defenders to get there. Man, that was actually extraordinarily impressive that he got that to the basket. And, I mean, you said it perfectly. He went through every one of the defenders for TCU. Anderson out front. Screen from Uday rolls out of it. Utah State stays with it. Coles left alone for three. Jacoby knocks in a big tray there. And the Frogs back out in front now by one, 35-34. Boy, he's such a weapon being able to extend their stretch four, able to knock down that three. Martinez to answer with a three of his own. It does. Ian Martinez, the right wing in front of the TCU bench, scores it to make it now 37-35 Aggies. Yeah, that was just a drive penetration and help, and then a kick out to a wide-open shooter. PB just unable to get back out to contest. Here's Anderson with it in traffic, takes it in around Brown, missed the running on Hander, loose on the floor. Anderson comes up with it. He lost a shoe. He's got a blowout in Turn three, left-hand side, it's Peavy to the elbow, feeds it off down low, Coles with a floater no, and a rebound taken out of there by Osaboard. Into the forecourt with a Darius Brown. Brown picks up his dribble, sends it back right-hand side out of Martinez. Ian feeds it off down low to the seven-footer, Johnson. He'll skip it left-hand wing, Brown works it on to Uday, skip it back, Martinez, extra pass, Johnson, they run at him, he's fouled. Uday went for the block, instead he fouls Isaac Johnson. Now the seven-footer who shoots 82% for the free throw line will be there for three when we get back. 2.38 to play here in this first half. The Horn Frogs find themselves down 37-35 stations. This is going to be a bonus break for you, okay? As this will be 
OT bonus break number one. OT bonus break number one stations right here. Back after this timeout. And a word from Lon Smith Roofing. Dallas Fort Worth Roofing Company. Lon Smith Roofing is one of America's top 25 roofing companies and has been serving the DFW Metroplex for nearly 50 years. From our humble Fort Worth beginnings in 1974, we have grown our company with the simple formula of a commitment to excellence. Our founder, Lon Smith, believed that no matter how good we are, we can always do better. Lon Smith Roofing is committed to providing the finest Fort Worth and Dallas roofing products and the most trusted service in the industry. There are those who wait for spring, and then there are Cadillac drivers who boldly inspire spring's arrival in stunning sedans poised to outrun winter or in stylish SUVs. Bringing together design and performance with such exuberance, they make every day feel like that first warm day of the year. So this spring, don't wait. Be among those who inspire boldness in bloom at the Cadillac Move Up sales event. Visit your Metroplex Cadillac dealers today. Left here this first half, four frogs down by two to Utah State, 37-35. Welcome you back to Indiana here in Indianapolis. When you come to the Hoosier State, think about two things related to TCU basketball column. One's good, one is sad, and that is uh, the first one is Lee Nalen, Indiana native. That's right. One of the greats in TCU basketball history. And here in Indianapolis, our thoughts are with the Neil Doherty family who passed away here in this city. Former head coach at TCU. Just thinking about them today as the Frogs make their way here to Gamebridge Fieldhouse for the third time in the last three years for the NCAA tournament for this Horn Frog program. Find themselves down by two right now, 37-35. Utah State with the advantage here early on. And we thought the Frogs would have success running against the Aggies, right now, it's the Aggies with more points in a fast break than TCU. Yeah, 8-6 to six there, but more importantly, they're getting 28 of their 37 in the paint. They're yeah. getting everything they want right at the rim, whereas TCU is not. They've only got 10 points in the paint of their 35. So TCU has made five threes, which is a nice stat for the Frogs, but they're just uh, gone cold and uh, a little bit here in the, in the better part of the second half here. Or the second half of the first half. Does that yep. make sense? <laughs> and yep. uh, Utah State's made seven in a row. So that's how you take a three-point or a two-point lead. I'm actually, TCU's actually lucky to be only down two at this point after a team goes on a seven, makes seven straight baskets on you. Right. You can see Jamie Dixon. We had an opportunity to see him here in the timeout. He's important his team to get some stops on the offensive end. That is always his priority, defense. Free throw line is going to go Avery Anderson. Or excuse me, I should say it's going to go uh, Isaac Johnson out of the timeout. Right in front of Avery Anderson he goes. Johnson, the 82% free throw shooter. Foul was on Ernest Uday. Johnson's first one is good. Uday's first personal team foul number five of the Frogs. Second free throw, good. Big man's got a nice soft touch, doesn't he? He does, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at his ankle braces. Looks like he's got those uh, like ankle braces that you buy at like a Dick's Sporting Goods yeah. or something like that, yeah. as opposed to getting, I don't know if he's got his ankles taped underneath there. You don't see guys wearing those type of ankle braces very often, right? Because usually guys just go ahead and get their uh, ankles taped. So that's a little, a little difference. Seemed to work for him. He made all three free throws. Knocked them all down. Yeah. And back to the zone defense for Utah State. 1-3-1 one, one look with Martinez at the head of it at six foot five. Here's Anderson trying to bounce it to Peavy, and that ball's kicked by Martinez. I mean, TCU's going to be in trouble if they can't even make simple passes around this zone. Somebody's going to have to learn to get some penetration here as Anderson now tries to penetrate and finds Uday right under the basket. Ernest with it. They close out on him, get a right-hand wing now to Avery. Corner right, it goes to Manuel Miller. That's the really soft spot in this zone. He missed it. Uday trying to keep it alive, but Brown claims it now. 
You want that baseline jumper against a 1-3-1 one, one if you can get it, right? Yeah, no doubt, especially from your best baseline shooter. Right-hand side with it now is Martinez. Out top it goes to Brown. 40 to 35 right now. It's a four-point lead. Or excuse me, a five-point lead for Utah State. Brown with it. Working on Miller. Top it goes Martinez. He'll fire a three-pointer. That one doesn't go. I think spins awkwardly out of his hand. It goes out of bounds. And the Frogs will have it. And Aduje was he was available underneath there to get an offensive board. Just the ball caromed off the rim. The Frogs got to make sure they're boxing out. That ball spins sideways yeah, out of his hand. Not not an easy uh, easy shot if you're getting the ball to come out of your hand like that. Anderson out top. It comes out of Micah Peavy. Peavy off now to Anderson again. Against his zone. Avery tried to penetrate to the free throw line. Backs it out now. Left hand side to Peavy. Emmanuel Miller corner left. Gives it off now to Anderson. Gets it back baseline now to Miller. And it slapped away. That should have been a foul I felt like. And loose on the floor. Tie up here is going to give it back to Utah State. Ute had a hand on it as did a Utah State defender. But Miller got hacked across the arm. That's when he lost possession of it. Yeah, and he's letting the official know about it right now. And so is uh, Coach Jamie Dixon. Miller has been the uh, on the wrong end of a couple calls now yeah. in this game. The very first play of the game, he had a rebound where uh, Johnson went over his back and T.C. lost the ball out of bounds. 40-35 to 35 right now. Utah State with it. Push here for Brown. Now the right-hand wing, Darius. Skips it, corner left. Catch here by Uduje. He's working baseline. Right hand side, Brown for three. That one goes. Big three pointer for Darius Brown, the third, and a 40% three point shooter. He doesn't take a ton of them. He's selective, but he makes. You know, he made a good one there, and TCU's got an opportunity here to go a little two for one if they can get a good shot going here. Eight point lead. It's Utah State's largest. Micah Peavy out front. The zone has worked well for the Aggies. Peavy, three pointer. Can't get it. Gets his own rebound, does Micah. Micah in traffic. Bounces left. Coles baseline. Short. Peavy follows and scores off the glass. And a timeout going to be taken here by Utah State. Man, what a finish from Peavy. Yes. Came flying in and caught it like back left over the back of his head and was able to somehow on his way down, never didn't even gather himself coming down and just kind of flipped it up off the glass and Boy, TCU needed a basket in the worst way right there. Yeah, Danny Sprinkle was hot after that one. He wanted his team to grab that rebound with an eight-point lead to try to add to it. Unable to grip, get it. And so now, with 30 seconds left in this half, there's just a two-tenths of a second differential between the first half clock and the shot clock. If you're Utah State, you want to use all of this, don't you? Oh, 100%. Yeah, you come all the way down, take the shot with three, four seconds on the shot on the uh, on the you know, I guess shot clock to just point you over it. But four four seconds left, take a shot, give yourself a chance at a uh, at a tip in maybe. Um, and then if it, even if it goes in, TCU's probably going to have a hard time getting the ball out of the net and out of bounds and, and going the other way. Leads at six right now, 43-37. Utah State with the basketball and the advantage. And walking it across comes Darius Brown. But Utah State's, they've made eight out of their last nine shots now at this point. So TCU has got to come up with a stop right here. Spread the floor here to the Aggies. I like this set. They've got it, the frog spread out. Got a 10 on the shot clock. And yeah, Brown just told Osibor to wait. He started to come. He said, hold on a second. Yep, now Brown's going to keep it himself. Kicks it off of the corner. Martinez, they close out on him. One second left. Fires a three. It doesn't go. And the lead will be six for Utah State at the half of the Horn Frogs. Frogs, very fortunate right there. Yes. Martinez caught that ball. A great pass from Brown. Hit him right in the shooting pocket. And he doesn't take the shot with four seconds yep. to go. He should, throws a pump fake and, and takes a sidestep dribble to the left and then has a, kind of an awkward shot. He took, he turned down a great shot for a much poorer shot, and the Frogs dodged the bullet there. I'll be honest, I was a little surprised that Brown didn't just take it to the rim as well. I knew he didn't want to shoot it too early, but he had a path to the rim, didn't he? Uh, he did, but they were closing out on him a little bit, and he kicked it out to Martinez, who's made 48 threes on the uh, – on the season and shoots 38 percent and he's and he's getting an inside out pass with no basically no defender on him brown had beaten avery anderson on the dribble nice close out by micah peavy but I, actually that was jameer nelson on the close out but you're right martinez didn't take the initial shot missed the three 
The lead will be six of the half. 43-37. Utah State with the advantage on the Horn Frogs. Our halftime show starts next after this local timeout here on the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. Since the late 1890s, TCU athletes who excelled in their sport have been awarded the Block T letter as a symbol of success, and today the tradition continues. If you're a former TCU student athlete, the Block T Association is looking for you. The Block T Association brings former TCU athletes together in a number of programs and events, including the TCU Athletics Hall of Fame, mentoring programs for current TCU student athletes, team reunions, and our famous football tailgate parties. Get on the team today at blockt.tcu.edu. Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at hopefarmfw.org. Hello everyone, this is Chauncey Franks with TCU Fellowship Christian Athletes. I want to invite you out to our TCU FCA Night of Champions Banquet. You're going to have the opportunity to hear from coaches such as Kurt Solos, TJ Bruce, Malcolm Kelly, Mark Tomadol, and others. But the highlight of the night is hearing from our student athletes the impact FCA is having on their life. The banquet is April 25th. Doors open at 6 o'clock. Program starts at 6.30 in the indoor practice facility. Go to tcufca.org for banquet information. Hi, everybody. It's John Denton for the Flying Tea Club. You know, college athletics is an ever-changing world, and the Flying Tea Club is keeping TCU ahead of the curve. The Flying Tea Club is the TCU name, image, and likeness collective, helping TCU student-athletes make a positive impact in the Fort Worth community. Whether it's making big plays or enhancing the Flying Tea Club's support of local charities, TCU athletes are making a difference on and off the field. Get on the team today and make your tax-deductible donation at flyingteaclub.com. Let's keep winning at flyingteaclub.com. Dialed in on that first half, Dave Shook has all the highlights right now on our Halftime Rewind. Halftime in Indianapolis where the Horn Frogs had as large as an eight-point lead in that opening half, but go into the locker room trailing by six. 43-37 is the score as Utah State with a 9-2 run to close out the half and take that six-point lead into the locker room. Dave Shook with you here inside the Moritz Studios as we welcome you to the TCU Halftime Report. And as we always do, we lead things off with the Halftime Rewind, taking a look at back at all the biggest moments, highlights, and numbers from that opening half. And with two teams that like to play fast, you knew this had the potential to be a wide-open game, and that's exactly what we got in the early going as the Frogs took advantage of that wide open nature of the first half building an early lead behind six quick points from Emmanuel Miller as he gave the TCU Horn Frogs an 11 to 6 lead just four minutes into the ball game that good start would continue moments later as Xavier Cork chipped in by hitting the offensive glass left hand side now to old pan and here's Nelson gets it back fires another jumper that doesn't go Miller's able to keep it alive though on a tap to Tennyson and get it right back to Eman for three and Emmanuel Miller scores that one he's got nine for the Horn Frogs that part of a good stretch for Emmanuel Miller, who had five, six early points in the ball game. It was part of a 7-2 to two run that would give TCU their largest lead of the game at 18-10 to 10, with 13 minutes left to play before halftime. From there, though, some of those old bad habits would start to creep in a little bit for the Frogs as the turnover bug would bite them, allowing the Aggies to piece together what was a 14-5 to five run over about a five-minute stretch, with five of those coming from Great Osibor as the Aggies grabbed a 24-23 lead as we ticked under eight minutes to go before the break. Lead would teeter back and forth for the next several minutes, including a deep one from Jacoby Coles, who made the Aggies pay for leaving him alone. Anderson out front. Screen from Uday rolls out of it. Utah State stays with it. Coles left alone for three. Jacoby knocks in a big tray there. And the Frogs back out in front now by one, 35-34. Part of a stretch of five straight points for Coles for TCU as they retook the lead at that point at 35-34 to 34 with three and a half minutes left to go before halftime. But then it was Utah State that stayed red hot as they finished out the half making seven consecutive shots and eight of their final ten of the half as they put together a 9-2 to two run over the final two and a half minutes that allowed them to take a six-point lead into the locker room at 43-37. to 37. So that's a look at the halftime rewind and now that gives us an opportunity also 
So to take a look at some of those first half numbers in this one as TCU struggling from the field a little bit in this one, having made just 14 of 33 shots from the field. That's 42% shooting it okay from the three-point line, though, making five of 14 in that first half and four of six at the line. Meanwhile, Utah State, as we mentioned, red hot, making 17 of 32 from the field. That's 53%, just three of nine from the three-point line, but also six of seven at the stripe in this one. One of the key numbers, though, is that turnover column where TCU, we mentioned seven turnovers in the first half, leading to 11 points for Utah State. Meanwhile, compare that to just three for the Aggies who have taken care of the basketball in this first half. TCU only turning those three turnovers into three points. Rebounding, though, very much in favor of the Frogs as they out-rebounded Utah State 21-14 to in the opening half, including 8-2 to on the offensive glass, leading to 11 second-chance points for TCU. Points in the paint, though, dominated right now by the Aggies, outscoring TCU around the rim 28-12. to Fast break points, just about a wash, with the Aggies outscoring TCU 8-6, to despite the wide-open nature of the ball game. Figure TCU would love some opportunities to convert on some of those... Uh some of those fast break opportunities that have presented themselves in this first half. Individually, only one player in double figures for either side. That's Emmanuel Miller, who's leading the charge for TCU right now. He's got 11 points on four of six shooting, including two of three from the three-point line to go along with five rebounds. Also in the scorebook right now, Micah Peavy having a nice half as well as he's got seven points on three of five shooting and one of two from the three-point line. He also with a team-high five rebounds in that opening half. On the other side for Utah State, though. Great Osibor leading the way for the Aggies. He had nine points to go along with five rebounds and three assists as well for the big guy to lead the way for Utah State and then also finishing with nine points. Ian Martinez in that opening half made three of six from the field, including one of four from the three-point line to go along with a couple of assists in that opening half. So that takes us to the end of the numbers in this one. 43 to 37 is what it all adds up to with eight-seeded Utah State leading it over nine-seeded TCU at at the break in Indianapolis with a shot at the top seed in the region Purdue on the line to the winner of this one coming up on Sunday with the time still to be determined. A lot of basketball still left to play for the Horn Frogs and still more to come here as we continue with the TCU halftime report. We'll take a timeout and when we come back we'll go around the rest of the NCAA tournament here on day two including more Big 12 action in progress right now going on in Memphis. We'll tell you about that one coming up here in just a little bit as we continue with the TCU See you halftime report here on the Horn Frog Sports Network. We'll be back coming up after this from Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Tom Thumb for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries online and save over $300 weekly with digital coupons all in one place. Plus, earn rewards every time you shop in store or online and redeem for free groceries or gas savings. Download the Tom Thumb app or go to TomThumb.com to start saving today. Tom Thumb, DFW's grocer since 1948. The same things that help your favorite team win are also the same things that can help your family business win. Things like hard work, dedication, and knowing how to make a big play. It's how teams win and how businesses succeed. And to secure your success, adding a committed, dedicated team member like Amogee Bank. Because when you do that, there's no way you can lose. We're here, we're available, and we're ready to go to work. Amogee Bank, we put the family in business banking. Amogee Bank, a division of Zions Band Corporation and a member FDIC. With more joint health, there's more get-out-and-go time. There's more time for Saturday tailgates. More time for game-winning plays. And more Horned Frog wins. With quality, personalized joint care, Texas Health can help you get more out of life and more time for the big game. That's how Texas Health cares more. Take our hip and knee health assessment or find a specialist today at yourjointhealth.com eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply.
This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Texas Christian University. Any use of this presentation is prohibited without the express consent of Texas Christian University and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by Texas Christian University. On the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield, welcome to the Halftime Report. This is the Coors Light Scoreboard. Now let's check on scores from around the country. Horn Frogs playing for their tournament lives right now as they trail Utah State at the break. 43-37 to is the score. Dave Shook with you here inside the Merritt Studios as we continue with the TCU Halftime Report with a look around the rest of college basketball on this day two of the NCAA tournament. The Horn Frogs, one of three Big 12 teams in action today. One game still in progress right now. That featuring the top seed in the South region. That is the Houston Cougars taking on the 16th seeded Lancers from Long Wood. That game being played at FedEx Forum in Memphis right now and the Cougars showing the Lancers what it's been like for just about every other opponent for Houston this season as the Lancers were held to just 16 points in the opening half as the Cougars ran out to a 43-16 to halftime leader on uh, cruise control right now as they head toward the finish just about halfway through the second half in that one. LJ Cryer leading the way for Houston has 17 points to go along with a couple of rebounds and two assists in this one as Houston cruising what looks like to a second round date out of the South region, which will give them a matchup against Texas A&M as the Aggies knocked off eighth seeded Nebraska 98 to 83 earlier on today. The final score from earlier on today in the Big 12, well that was third seeded Baylor as the Bears were taking on 14th seeded Colgate today as part of the West region, but the game also being played at FedEx Forum in Memphis earlier on today and this was the Jalen Bridges show for the Bears as they came out smoking hot to start the ball game from three as they made 20, uh, scored 23 points, did Bridges to go along with five rebounds as the Bears raced out to a 20-point halftime lead at 54-34 and cruised to a 92-67 to win. The Bears have a date with the Clemson Tigers out of the ACC, who upended 11 seeded New Mexico, the Mountain West Conference Tournament champions. 77-56 to was the final score in that one, so the Tigers advanced to take on the Bears coming up on Sunday. The other two games that are in action right now, well, one of them taking place is part of the West region being played in Spokane as fifth seeded St. Mary's, the regular season and tournament champions out of the West Coast Conference, taking on 12th seeded Grand Canyon. Tight one in this one as they come inside the final five minutes of the opening half with the Gales holding a narrow 21 to 20 lead right now over Grand Canyon. And we've got an upset alert right now in the South region being played at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, where fifth seeded Wisconsin is taking on 12th seeded James Madison. But with the records of these two teams, you might have thought the seedings would have been swapped as the Dukes who won 31 games in the regular season are the team that look like they should have been the five seed in this one as they've led this one pretty much wire to wire over Wisconsin had a 13 point lead at the break that lead is 10 right now as we come under eight minutes left to play in the second half James Madison leading it over Wisconsin 55 to 45 as they try to punch their ticket out of the south region into a matchup on Sunday against fourth seeded Duke as the Blue Devils knocked off 13 seeded Vermont earlier today 64 to 47 was the final score in that one so Let's look around the rest of college basketball on this day two of the NCAA tournament. Just a couple of spots available still for this weekend's second round. It will keep you up to date on all of those as we continue throughout the night. We also wanted to throw in one baseball score for you, too, as 18th ranked TCU picked up a one to nothing win today over Oklahoma State to get their second conference win of the season. And the story in this one was starting pitcher Peyton Toll for the Horn Frogs, who worked a complete game five hit shutout as the Horn Frogs knocked off Oklahoma State today in Stillwater. One to nothing was the final score in that one. So we're just about ready for the start of the second half. We'll get back out to courtside as Colin Boddicker will have our halftime locker room report as we get you set for the second half between the Frogs and the Aggies with TCU trailing at 43 to 37. Back with more after this local timeout on the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. There are those who see the world through a different lens, who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid, but by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders to think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time to lead on. 
Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at HopeFarmFW.org. The TCU Frog Club brings generous and loyal supporters together in support of more than 500 Horned Frog student-athletes. Frog Club donors help TCU athletes reach their fullest academic and athletic potential through philanthropic investments in scholarship, the TCU endowment, capital projects, and our sport-specific groups. Become a Frog Club donor and gain exclusive access and premium benefits. Memberships start as low as $100 per year. Visit tcufrogclub.com to join today. Second half tip-off is minutes away. But first, a preview of the halftime adjustments made by Coach Jamie Dixon and staff. With our exclusive locker room report, here is Colin Boddicker. It's halftime here in Indianapolis for this NCAA tournament round of 64 game where Utah State leads TCU 43-37. Back in the locker room, Coach Jamie Dixon was calm. And there wasn't any panic in his voice, but he made it known that he was not happy with the defensive effort of the Frogs. In the last 10 minutes of the first half, where Utah State made eight of their last 10 shots to take control of this game. Offensively, Coach Dixon wants the Frogs to attack the Aggie zone defense that's been giving them fits. They'll definitely see it again here in the second half, so they're going to have to find a way to penetrate the score against it or have perimeter shooters confidently knock down threes. They also want to push the ball on the fast break, but don't force it if it's not there. The Frogs had a couple of bad turnovers trying to get out in transition. Coach Dixon preached valuing possession of the ball. Defensively, Coach Dixon was not pleased with the intensity of his Frogs. They can't get caught watching a play unfold as they did a few times, which led to a few easy baskets for the Aggies. They'll have to stay focused and lock in defensively and not give them any easy buckets. If they want to overcome this deficit, advance to the second round for a shot at number one seed, Purdue. So that'll do it for the halftime locker room report where Utah State leads TCU 43-37. We'll be right back for the start of the second half after a quick break and a message from Home Zone Furniture. To be made in Texas means quality. And at Home Zone, we're proud to create furniture with premium materials, upgraded features, and stylish designs, all at the best price. And yes, made right here in Texas. Visit us today for incredible store wide savings and 48 months with no interest, no down payment, and no minimum purchase. Our non commissioned team makes it comfortable to browse, plus, enjoy free ice cream while you shop. Visit us at any of our 13 DFW locations today. Home Zone, Texas born, family owned. Windstar World Resort proudly presents world-class entertainment. Jim Gaffigan, Jason Aldean, Stevie Nicks, James Taylor, and Kevin Hart are just a few upcoming names that will be performing live at Windstar. From comedy to country, rock to pop, Lucas Oil Live at Windstar offers something for everyone. Tickets are available at SeatGeek.com. And don't forget to play like a star at Windstar World Resort, located on I-35, one mile north of the Texas-Oklahoma border. There are those who wait for spring, and then there are Cadillac drivers who boldly inspire spring's arrival in stunning sedans poised to outrun winter or in stylish SUVs. Bringing together design and performance with such exuberance, they make every day feel like that first warm day of the year. So this spring, don't wait. Be among those who inspire boldness in bloom at the Cadillac Move Up sales event. Visit your Metroplex Cadillac dealers today. With more joint health, there's more get out and go time. There's more time for Saturday tailgates. More time for game winning plays. And more horned frog wins. With quality personalized joint care, Texas Health can help you get more out of life and more time for the big game. That's how Texas Health cares more. Take our hip and knee health assessment or find a specialist today at yourjointhealth.com. Get ready for the 
start of the second half here, the Horn Frogs and the Utah State Aggies. Aggies up by six right now. 43-37, Brian Esther to Colin Boddicker. Along with our producer engineer on site, Kyle Cross. With you for this one. As you mentioned, Jamie Dixon disappointed that first half. Just said, I thought his team actually got out of here at halftime a lot earlier than normal. There's still about eight minutes left on the halftime clock just to get some shots up, Colin. Yeah, I think, the, well, yeah, they only shot 42% here in the first half, so you want to get a couple of shots up, and you had a bunch of guys out here shooting threes because perhaps they are looking at, they're going to be seeing this zone a lot, and if they're going to have trouble penetrating against it, their guys are going to have to start knocking down threes here, so you might see a lot more of Trey Tennyson here, I would think, here in the second half. I am glad to see Chuck O'Bannon back on the floor. I know Coach Dixon was not necessarily thrilled with the last play that Chuck made. He had a defensive lapse and then came down and turned the ball over, uh, which led to an easy basket for, for Utah State. But Chuck, that was only his eighth turnover on the entire season. So I think he's a... Uh, a key piece for the here in the second half, and we'll see some big game Chuck showing up here. He, along with Jameer Nelson, Emmanuel Miller, and Micah Peavy, joined Ernest Uday as a five of the floor for the Horn Frogs to start this second half. Utah State answers with their senior point guard, Darius Brown, along with Ian Martinez. They crank out that 1 3 1 to start the second half here as Mason Falslev, Isaac Johnson, and Great Osabar. On the five of the floor for Utah State. Baseline left is old Bannon. Bounces through. There's a cutter. Emmanuel Miller. A little work at halftime for the Horn Frogs against this 1-3-1. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, when are they going to flash somebody to the high post, which is where you can attack this zone? They never do, but they worked it around the perimeter, and then O'Bannon just ripped and drove baseline and finds a cutting Miller for a big-time dunk to start the second half here. Here's Brown. Johnson feeds it down low. Osabor, double team there. Tried to put it up twice. Lost a handle on it. Nice job with that help defense for Chuck O'Bannon. Here's Nelson weaving in the four quarter. Miller leaves it off now for Peavy. Peavy to the free throw line, works in traffic, tried to work at baseline to O'Bannon, but instead back the other way come the Aggies. Frogs trail 43-39. With the basketball on the left-hand side is Darius Brown. Out top, left alone is Jackson. The big fellas three doesn't go. The rebound out to Emmanuel Miller. Johnson, I should say, not Jackson. Yeah, it stepped into a wide open three there, but only a 35% three-point shooter. Here's Nelson. Sends it off right-hand side. Peavy working in traffic on Falslev. Loses him to the rim. Missed it. And Falslev grabs a rebound in. Boy, you're not going to get a much better look than that from Peavy. He'd want to have that one back right at the right at the rim. Falslev sends it corner left now. Working with it is Johnson. Sends it over right-hand wing to Martinez for three. That one's short. One and done for Utah State. Miller with the board. Yeah, better effort right out of the gate here for TCU on uh, the defensive side of the ball for sure. Horn Frogs with it. Nelson, a little high-low action. Uday able to tip it through the rim. And the Horn Frogs get the bucket there. It's a two-point game at 43-41. Man, Ernest Uday is so athletic. I yeah. thought that that pass was going to be way too high. He just goes up and gets it and guides it through the basket. Brown sends a corner right. Johnson with a catch out top. It comes now. Osabor puts it on the floor on Uday. Steps through him. And a foul here on Uday who fell down. I'm I'm sitting here. We had a great angle at this right here. Uday had absolutely perfect defensive position. Doesn't go for the pump fake, and Osabor still puts it on the deck and just blows right through him. Block call. That's a, it baffles me. I know they said they weren't going to call very many charges. I thought that was about as blatant of a charge you could have got in a game. Here's the inbounds now. Comes to Johnson. Johnson gives it up to the point guard, Brown. Right back to Johnson. Double team off the glass and score at seven footer that time. Yeah, nice play there from Utah State. A little pick and roll action. Johnson able to turn around and get through the contact to Peavy. Here's Nelson out front now to Emmanuel Miller. Miller works between the circles. Gives it up to Chuck O'Bannon. 17.45 to play. O'Bannon in traffic at the left elbow. Step back for the jumper. That one doesn't go in the rebound taken out of there by Brown now. Yeah, nobody home for an offensive rebound for TC that time. Very uncharacteristic. Darius takes it, feeds it off down low. Osabar with a left hand and scores that one. Now, Osabar just like absolutely moved Uday out of the way right there. Uday is a big, big guy to push out of the way. But he's able to do it and, and, and creates a wide open layup for himself. Jamie Dixon takes the 30 second timeout here quickly. The lead is at 6, 47 41 right now, with 17 28 to play. He didn't like something that he saw there, I think, defensively. We're going to take the timeout with him and say, work through it. Frogs trail this one by 6, 47 41. Back, we come back to this timeout. A word from Progressive Insurance. 
drivers who switch and save with Progressive could save hundreds, which could be life-changing. I mean, you could put that money towards that zero-turn lawnmower you've always wanted. And after using its edge-shaping technology to meticulously sculpt the face of the Mona Lisa into your grass, you'll become the undisputed king of Saturday morning lawn care, leaving your neighbor and sworn enemy Gary to question his place in the delicate neighborhood ecosystem. And it's all because you could save money switching at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states. There are those who wait for spring. And then there are Cadillac drivers who boldly inspire spring's arrival in stunning sedans poised to outrun winter or in stylish SUVs. Bringing together design and performance with such exuberance, they make every day feel like that first warm day of the year. So this spring, don't wait. Be among those who inspire boldness and bloom at the Cadillac Move-Up sales event. Visit your Metroplex Cadillac dealers today. Every child deserves health care designed just for them. And Cook Children's offers just that. They're more than just a health care system. They're your friends, your neighbors, and their parents too. So they see the world through your eyes. They see what you're going through. By working together, they can help your child get the best care and support possible. Find a doctor near you at cookchildrens.org. Today's game is brought to you by Progressive. See why over 28 million drivers trust Progressive to stay protected on the road. See for yourself at Progressive.com. A lot of time left in this one. 17-28 here in the second half. Frogs found themselves down by 6, 47-41. But Jamie Dixon with an early timeout here in the second. He wanted to continue to talk about this 1-3-1 defense that the Frogs are seeing from Utah State. But also... They made a couple of little subtle changes offensively. Osamore getting a touch on every possession now. Oh, yeah. I think that's their game plan. They kind of got away from it in the first half because Frogs did a nice job of taking it away. But now he's getting the ball in the paint, and uh, Uday's just having a hard time with him down there on the block. Frogs with a couple of substitutions, I do believe, out of the timeout as well. Let's see if Xavier Cork is on the floor now for TCU. And Trey Tennyson, Jacoby Coles as well. So, Jameer Nelson, Emmanuel Miller, Xavier Court, Jacoby Coles, and Trey Tennyson, the five of the four for TCU. A lot of guys that can shoot out there right now yeah. for the Frogs. I'll say this, like, too, like, the Frogs have got to adjust to the way that the officials are going to call this game, right? They're letting them play physical. Each team only had five fouls called on them in the first half and only one here on the sec in the second half thus far. Frogs are just getting out physical, and they should be able to. It's tough to flip that switch, though. You've got to come sure. out with a mindset that you're going to do that. This is a team, too, that just really goes seven, maybe eight deep. Utah State, the starters are still out there. Left-hand corner goes Coles. Coles fires it and scores. Three-pointer. There's Jacoby. Coles against that zone, able to score it. And the Frogs within three now, 47-44. Yeah, nice job. Jameer Nelson uh, drawing a def defender, and Coles slipped, uh, slipping out to the corner there for wide open three. Yeah, Jacoby might be the answer for the Horned Frogs in this ball game. He can score in bunches. Here's Johnson stepping through and flipping it up off the glass and scoring it. I mean, that's just, that's great defense. That's just a better, a better offense right there. In a million years, I don't think he could uh, shoot a high enough percentage for them to win the game with that shot. Stay in the 1-3-1. Does Utah State corner right? They go Tennyson. Tennyson sees the double team, gives it off now to Coles who tried to work it inside. Johnson got a hand on it, ends up in the hands of court, up off the glass. Xavier can't get the roll, but he draws contact. Does X, he'll go to the free throw line now for the Horn Frogs with 16.34 to play in the second hand. Yeah, nice job there from uh, Cork. Uh, that ball got deflected and it hits the backboard, just like a weird play, but Cork, Johnny on the spot, snags it, throws a pump fake, and ends up on the free throw line here. Xavier Cork to the free throw line. 70% free throw shooter. Knocks the first one in. Fifth NCAA game in his career. For Xavier Cork. Lead at four now, 49-45. Xavier's second one is good. Three-point game. Emmanuel Miller yelling at his teammates, imploring them to get down on defense, ready to play here. On top with it is Brown. Brown sees that double team come, tries to back out of it, and sends it off now to Martinez. Martinez with Jameer Nelson on it. Frogs in a man-to-man. On top it goes now. 
Group Rob's extending the pressure here right now, doing a nice job, and then a lob pass wide oh, open. They, Johnson, they had a switch with Tennyson having to guard him. Found the mismatch. Did the experience? Darius Brown throws it over the top of the defense, over the top of Tennyson of the lay-in there for Isaac Johnson. 51-46, back to the five-point lead. X in the lane, works around. Johnson lost the handle on it, and standing out of bounds was Falsep when he touched it. It's going to stay with TCU with 15.53 to play here in this second half. Time out of the floor. Horn Frogs down by five. 51-46, back after this word from Lon Smith Roofing. Dallas Fort Worth Roofing Company. Lon Smith Roofing is one of America's top 25 roofing companies and has been serving the DFW Metroplex for nearly 50 years. From our humble Fort Worth beginnings in 1974, we have grown our company with the simple formula of a commitment to excellence. Our founder, Lon Smith, believed that no matter how good we are, we can always do better. Lon Smith Roofing is committed to providing the finest Fort Worth and Dallas roofing products and the most trusted service in the industry. If you're looking for the definition of service, I'm sure Sewell's name is in the dictionary of service. I don't think there's a person that I've ever come in contact with that works at Sewell that wasn't the top of the top. There's nothing to compare it to. They take good care of me. I'm happy to drive a Sewell. Sewell Automotive Companies, a proud supporter of the TCU Horn Frogs. Visit us at Sewell.com. Sewell, obsessed with service since 1911. Tom Thumb is making shopping and saving easier than ever. Check out Tom Thumb for you in our mobile app where you can shop for groceries online and save over $300 weekly with digital coupons all in one place. Plus, earn rewards every time you shop in store or online and redeem for free groceries or gas savings. Download the Tom Thumb app or go to TomThumb.com to start saving today. Tom Thumb, DFW's grocer since 1948. Three to play here in the second half. Horn Frogs down by five. 51 46 in Indianapolis. Round one action. NCAA tournament. Luxor Staffing, DFW's premier staffing agency. Standing by ready to help you find the right employees. Homegrown and deeply rooted in the TCU community. Luxor Staffing has 10 local fully bilingual recruiting offices. They can help you find, uh, oh, well, with all your staffing needs anywhere in North Texas. Visit them online today at luxorstaffing.com. Learn more about how they do staffing right. All right, this extended timeout, giving Jamie Dixon more time to work through this 1-3-1 zone that Utah State continues to throw the frogs. The well, frogs are going to have to continue to knock down threes. If they get open looks, they can knock them down. They've got the guys that can do it. Jacoby Cole's already two for two from three uh, in tonight's game. has made one here in the second half. But, you know, part of it, I think you just got to attack it from the high post area. And a lot of the times, the frogs aren't sending anybody there because if you get to the high post area, you can be first or off, face the basket, and you, have, you can be a threat from there, right? And if guys dive into you, you can find open shooters if you have a, a uh, consistent, good ball handler, catch the ball in there, makes good decisions, can find the shooters wide open on the perimeter. Out of the timeout, frogs with possession of the basketball. Jameer Nelson will trigger the inbounds. From underneath the TCU basket. Looking for Coles who catches into traffic. Had it blocked by Johnson right back to him. Wow. Lead out pass. Here's knocked away by Emmanuel Miller as Brown was looking for Osabor. It's knocked out of pounds by the Horn Frogs. They'll keep Will Utah State with 25 on the shot clock. Micah Peavy set to get back into the lineup, and he's going to come in for Trey Tennyson. Yeah, when Jacoby Coles elevated for that shot, he put his shoulder into Johnson's chest, and I thought he was going to create a little bit more separation. Johnson's just too long, seven foot tall with long arms, and was able to get those arms back up, blocked shot. And bounce comes to Johnson. Johnson's not a guy who blocks a lot of shots, but he's had some success in this game. Martinez with Peavy on it. Sends it back out now. False left. Guess where he goes? To the rim. Misses it. Rebound out to Emmanuel Miller. Quickly in the forecourt comes Peavy. Peavy finds a trailer and Miller. Gives it off down to court. Blocked by Osabor. And a foul here is going to be on great Osabor. And we'll send Xavier Cork to the free throw line now. That'll be his second foul here. Nice job by the Frogs. Kind of a secondary break right there. But Peavy finds a cutting Miller who 
draws obviously all the attention to the defense and drops it off the court here and ends up uh, getting fouled by uh, Osibor, ends up on the free throw line where he knocks it down the first one here. Jamie Dixon's yelling at Scott Brown for not calling the foul. The foul was called, but he said it happened right in front of Scott Brown. Okay, so I 100% agree with this, right? Yeah. Like, if he doesn't put his hand out, that means he wasn't going to call a foul, which is a problem, right? You got to be able to, you gotta, <laughs> don't bail out your uh, your partner there. Second free throw is no good for X. 51-47, it's a four-point ball game right now. 15-18 to play. Osabor has got it with X on his hip. At the high post on the left-hand side, turns and faces on court. Puts it on the floor, trying to work it to the baseline. Keeps possession of it. Down to seven on the shot clock. Double team with the left hand. They're going to wave the bucket off and get a foul before the shot. Xavier's doing a really nice job of holding his ground against Osibor. Osibor turned into that, probably got away with spinning his uh, pivot foot, but ends up on the uh, uh, foul on the floor, yep. which is a good uh, turnout for uh, TC here. Here's a three in the corner for Johnson that goes. Over Xavier Court, the seven footer able to score that one, make it 54 47 now. Seven point game. Well, you can't, you can't uh, really be ready to defend that. That's a tough shot. Seven footer running to the corner like that. Yep. Coles in the corner, kicks it back out now to Nelson, sends it left hand wing. PV. Michael with it. Top of the circle, it comes down. Nelson lost a handle on it. One hand with it. Osabor comes up with it. He kicked it out of bounds. Osabor couldn't hang on to it break there for the Horn Frogs. Avery Anderson said to get back in the lineup. That was a big break for the Frogs right there. And Nelson working back, trying to hound Osibor a little bit there. Gets him to fumble the ball out of bounds. And otherwise, that would have been an easy layup for uh, Utah State there. Frogs with it now. 14.35 to go. Out front is Avery Anderson. Gives that to Emmanuel Miller. Miller down low, feeds it off court, couldn't handle the pass. Osabor had it, Cork fouls it. Yeah, that was, was Osabor just uh, couldn't handle the pass, and Cork starting to run back on defense, just runs through his back. That's another unfortunate deal for Cork, who actually had Johnson pinned all the way under the basket. Miller was just a half a second late seeing him and unable to get the ball to him fast enough. That's the third on Xavier Cork. Osabor going to get back in, or it's going to be Uday back in the lineup. I thought Court gave him some decent minutes there. They're going to they're gonna need him down the stretch here. And TCU showing zone. Yep. I don't know. I can't remember the last time they played a zone like this. <laughs> yeah, 2 3 zone for the Horn Frogs. Here's false look. They're not a great shooting team. Martinez, really, their best three point shooter. Johnson, the big fella, made one earlier. Brown's made one as well. He's got it out front. Yeah, as a team, they only shoot 32%. So maybe this is a, an opportunity for the Frogs here. But they got to have to get out on this Johnson guy who is on fire right now. Just nails another one. Three pointer from the seven footer. His second one against that 2 3 zone here. And the lead now at 10, their largest of the game, 57 47. Johnson only made 23 all season long. Yep, right hand side with it as Miller steps through, sends it over to Peavy to answer short. Rebound, false left. Utah State with it. False left on the run. Watch out. He's going to take it all the way to the rim, send it off somewhere. No one can run it down. They say it's out of bounds. That's falling into the Utah State bench. It's one of their players. That was Osamore going for it. Falls right into Javon Jackson. Yeah, you can see right now Utah State, their best player on a ball that's clearly going to be out of bounds, still diving into yep. his own bench, trying to make save him, make a play. And guys like that can lead other guys, even if he's not scoring. He hasn't scored much here in the second half or, or rebounded much, and he's going to catch a breather here now for a minute. But you can lead, get guys to give more sure. uh, by, by leading by example like that. And TCU is going to need somebody on their team to do the same thing. Also, Moore and Falsa will check out here with 13 36 to go. See if they stay out to the under 12 timeout. Get them a little bit of a break here. As Sacco is into the lineup, Khalifa, 6'11 junior out of France. Also, Uday Uduja, Uduja, I should say, is in. Here's Cork falling down as Johnson Cork's free or Coles' free throw, I should say, from the elbow is good. Yeah, Coles, uh, he turned around, and couldn't believe uh, he was wide open. Yeah, he almost it almost like shocked him. He had to regather and, uh, and was able to still knock it down though. Isaac Johnson fell down. Here's Brown penetrating, kicks it off in the corner right. Oduje, Oduje working on Tennyson back out front. It comes down to Johnson. Yeah, nice close out there from Tennyson. Johnson puts it on the floor, strong to the rim, and foul. Avery Anderson was on his hip. 
Johnson tried to take advantage of it. He gets fouled and is going to go to the free throw line now for a pair. I mean, Johnson, that's only averaged 6.4 points a yeah. game on the season. He's got 17 tonight. He is the uh, the outlier in this game for sure. Yeah, a new career high for him. He had 16 against St. Louis earlier in the year. He is coming off a solid game against San Diego State. We had 11 points and five boards in the tournament in the Mountain West in Vegas to the Thomas and Mack Center as Johnson makes a free throw there. 13.04 to go. 58-49 right now. It's a nine-point Utah State lead. Trying to make it 10 is Isaac Johnson. By the way, his sister plays college basketball at Utah State. So you're saying skills run in the family? Yes, it is. 59-49. 10-point ball game. Here's Anderson out front. Anderson in traffic. Took it strong to the rim, and they can get a foul here. They're going to say before the shot? He ran right over Sacco. Are they going to get the foul on him? Okay, now, now they change it. Yeah, Roger Ayer said, yeah, it's, it's, it's going, he's going up. Back to single digits. Foul's starting to pile up here. Free throw is back in, so he doesn't sit him through the under 12 timeout. Uday's going to come in for TCU now. Second free throw is good for Anderson. Probably going to show some pressure here now, trying to change up this game a little bit. Brown gives it off now to Martinez. Martinez back to Brown. Brown to the right wing. Baseline. Picks it up. Threw it right in the hands of Avery Anderson. Still here for the Frogs. Yeah, Frogs. Nice job defensively there. Everybody was down ready to play that possession. Anderson running behind. Uday pulls the trigger from the elbow and scores. And Avery's starting to heat up a bit here. And it's all going to start with stops for the Frogs here. They want to climb back in this game. They got it down to down to six here. Avery is a streaky player. Martinez for three in the corner. You got to defend that. He scores it. Well, Sacco turned around and, and, and clipped uh, Jacoby Coles as he was trying to close out on him. But there was a, a miscommunication on who was going to guard Martinez there, if it was Miller or, or Coles. Lead at nine. Jacoby gives it up. Right-hand wing now to Peavy. Chuck O'Bannon up off the bench. He'll check into the next dead ball. Double team is Miller. Sends it off now to Avery Anderson. Anderson to the wing. Kicks it back now to Miller. Out top they go PV left-hand side, Jacoby. Inside it comes Uday. Uday sends it back now to Anderson. Three on the shot clock. Avery step back, leans in, forces one. Doesn't go, didn't hit the rim. That's an expiration of the shot clock. And will bring us to a timeout of the floor. 11.41 to go. Every time the Frogs show a little life, Utah State has an answer. That time it was a Ian Martinez three that answers an Avery Anderson jumper for the Horn Frogs, and it's now a nine-point game, 62-53. Utah State with the lead. Back we come after this local timeout here on well, the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. Since the late 1890s, TCU athletes who excelled in their sport have been awarded the Block T letter as a symbol of success, and today the tradition continues. If you're a former TCU student athlete, the Block T Association is looking for you. The Block T Association brings former TCU athletes together in a number of programs and events, including the TCU Athletics Hall of Fame, mentoring programs for current TCU student athletes, team reunions, and our famous football tailgate parties. Get on the team today at blockt.tcu.edu. Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at HopeFarmFW.org. 
Hello, everyone. This is Chauncey Franks with TCU Fellowship Christian Athletes. I want to invite you out to our TCU FCA Night of Champions Banquet. You're going to have the opportunity to hear from coaches such as Kurt Solos, TJ Bruce, Malcolm Kelly, Mark Tomadol, and others. But the highlight of the night is hearing from our student athletes the impact FCA is having on their life. The banquet is April 25th. Doors open at 6 o'clock. Program starts at 630 in the indoor practice facility. Go to tcufca.org for banquet information. to play in this ball game, the Horn Frogs. Down by nine, 62-53 right now. Utah State with the advantage. Brian Estridge, Colin Boddick, our producer engineer on site. It's Kyle Cross here in Indianapolis. Dave Shook's back at our Horn Frog Sports Network studios. Ray's got the con for this station's list pause. Ten seconds. For station identification here on the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. Point lead. Utah State led by six at the half. Frogs still out rebounding them by seven. But this is a Utah State team. Oh, a number that stands out to me, Collins, the fact they've had 18 team assists on their 24 made buckets. Yeah, it's, they're passing the ball really well and finishing when they get good looks like that. But here in the second half alone, Isaac Johnson's got 14 of their 19 points. He only had five points at halftime on one out of three from the floor. And here in the second half, he is now five of six from the floor. And a couple more free throws, and he's got 14 points for Utah State. He has been a, uh, a menace on the offensive end. Out of the timeout now. Utah State will have Osibor off the floor right now. Duje is in for him. No, Osibor's out there. Uduje, Osibor Martinez along with the point guard Darius Brown and Isaac Johnson. False left continues to sit right now for Utah State. And of those 18 assists for Utah State, Brown's already got 10 of them. Here's Brown. Gives it up now to Johnson. Johnson gives it back to Brown. Strong to the rim. Kicks it off in the corner. Duje had it blocked by guess who? Chuck O'Bannon. Chuck O'Bannon, best closeout man in the yeah. game right there. Gets that one and got it with authority. Oh, the attempt from Oduje. Eight on the shot clock right now. That's demoralizing it if is. you're a shooter. He thought, I mean, he had it. He covered, Chuck O'Bannon covered a lot of ground there to get that block. Inbounds to come from Johnson. Johnson sends it in the backcourt here to Darius Brown. Remember, he only had seven seconds now on the shot clock. Brown with a deep three out front. Scores it. Yeah, and, and, and Anderson knew it was coming and got right up in his grill. I was actually... Hoping that Anderson didn't foul him there. He just buries a 30-footer. 12-point leads the largest of the game. Here's O'Banna to the right wing. Chuck with it. Bounces off of the corner. Now to Emmanuel Miller. They close out on him with a double team. Emmanuel out top. It goes now to Anderson. Anderson in traffic. Hop step. Leaves it off now for Uday over Johnson. But a foul. Missed it. Boy, really tight interior pass. A nice job by Uday to catch that ball. Go up strong. Get the foul on Johnson. That's his second. Every time Emmanuel Miller catches it over there in the corner or in the short corner, they are coming with a double team. TCU's got to be aware of that and give him outlets to pass the ball. He's had to jump in the air a couple of times to pass that ball. Avery Anderson did a nice job coming back to that pass that time. Uday's free throw is good. He'll get a second effort. Second one came out awkwardly. Shot that a little quick, I felt like. And a rebound out of Johnson. Johnson gets it across now to Uduje. Uduje in traffic, takes it all the way in on Emmanuel Miller. No one stopped him, Colin. Yeah, he got all the way to the rim. And it's a little, little slowed down, almost like Euro step. Yeah. Frees up an easy lane for himself to the basket. There's O'Bannon. O'Bannon on the left hand side out of PV. Out front it comes Uday. Bumped in another turnover. Aduje with it. One, has a two on one. Aduje gets it back. Steps soon. PV and missed it. No, Frogs Rebound out of Miller. Frogs fortunate there. And I don't know how in the world all three officials didn't call that. Here's Anderson baseline now to O'Bannon for the jumper that doesn't go. Rebound Osabor. A big board there from Osabor. Yeah. PV all over him too. Ten minutes left in this ballgame. 
13-point Utah State lead. Ernest Thurday on the possession before, though, had the ball at the free throw line, and I didn't see who it was. I think it was Brown. Just ran right into him, knocked the ball, knocked him over, and knocked the ball out of him. No call. Osabor with it. Takes it to the baseline right where PB stays with it. Cross court to Brown for another three. This one, back of the iron, no good. Long rebound that Brown gets. Just out hustle the Horn Frogs. Has it between the circles. Close aboard, 10 on the shot clock. Gets around round day for the reverse layup. Yeah, I got right around him, too. You can see Osapor just a very skilled offensive player there. Facing up to the basket from 20 feet away. Just a little quick shake and then right past him. Anderson with it. Lead is 15, largest of the game for Utah State. And a foul here. All the Aggies with 9-12 to play. I like how Anderson's being aggressive, at least yep. going to the basket here. He's the only one really attacking and able to get by anybody. That's picked up another foul here on Johnson. That's his, or excuse me, they called this on Osibor. It's his third. Let's keep an eye on that right yeah. there. Fifth team foul on Utah State. Avery Anderson to the free throw line now. Anderson's got seven. Three of four for the free throw line of this game is Avery. Frog set to get in three players after this free throw from Anderson. TCU's just going to absolutely have to start getting stops yep. uh, if they want to get back in this game. Down 15, now down 14 after the made free throw here from Anderson. Right 69-55, 14-point margin. Avery makes the second. Jameer Nelson going to come in for Anderson now. Who's got nine. Third leading score on the team. Miller's got 13. Jacoby's got 10. And Avery with nine. And Jameer Nelson made the three-pointer in the first possession of the game and hasn't scored since. Nope. So need him to start uh, heating up here in the second half. Here's Brown. Frog's in a little bit of a scramble defense to get it to Uduje. Gives it back now to Brown. Darius Brown working between the circles. 8.53 to play. Darius out front. On Emmanuel Miller, Jameer Nelson fell down. Baseline, Oduje pulls up, jumper, sticks it between the backboard and the rim. That'll be TCU's ball. Oh, jump actually, ball. it's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to stay with Utah State. I looked at the arrow wrong. Yep, my, uh, it, it's one of the dumbest rules in, in college basketball. Uh, you do a nice job defending, ball gets stuck, and it goes possession arrow, and give them right back to him with 20 seconds on the clock. Just a terrible rule. They need to change it. Out front with it. Sacco. By the way, I'm not the only one with that opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Your brother feels the same way. Everybody feels that yeah. way. I don't know anybody that likes that, honestly. I don't know why it hasn't changed. Here's Darius Brown. Working on Jameer Nelson. Seven on the shot clock. Brown keeps. Brown pulls the trigger from 18. Jumper good. Yeah, he's just heating up right now. Utah State. TCU doing the best they can, but Utah State just knocking down shots right now. Now from with it is Coles. Off it goes now, Nelson, right-hand side now to Emmanuel Miller. 71-56, Frogs trail this one by 15. Jacoby on Sacco, draws contact, but doesn't get the roll. He'll go to the free-throw line as Khalifa Sacco. Whistle for the personal foul. Nice drive there from Jacoby Coles. Gets to his good spot there. A little pump fake, gets the guy off the ground. Takes the contact, almost gets it to go. Gets it up on the rim, and it just hung on the rim for a second. Well, the Frogs really could have used it, but... Settle for two free throws here. Jacoby to the line. First one's good. Coles with 11 in this ballgame, which was one more than his previous stop here at Gamebridge Fieldhouse as a freshman at Butler when he had 10. Osibor back into the lineup now. As Sacco sits, second free throw good for Jacoby Coles, Avery Anderson going to get back into the lineup for Jacoby, who's been rather hot for him offensively. TCU going defense here, offense defense with eight minutes to go in the game, already putting guys that can guard out there. How about this? Olsabor bringing it up himself. Yeah, yeah he's got guards on everybody else. Yep. Cork's the easiest uh, mark to come down the floor on. Here's Johnson on the floor into Miller. Put it up with the left hand. Missed it. Got his own rebound. Dale Johnson and a foul. I've been impressed with this seven-footer. I'll be honest with you. We read the scouting report on him. 
We heard that he was tougher than he looks, and so far he's been that. Oh, he's been outstanding for them. I mean, he's got 19 points, which is his career high. He's just having a career game. He's got, he's got his career high in the second half alone. In this Isaac game. Johnson, the sophomore out of American Fork, Utah, transfer from Oregon. He's got his Utah State Aggies up 71-58 right now on the Horn Frogs. Back would come after this timeout for our local stations here on the Horn Frogs Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, everybody. It's John Denton for the Flying Tea Club. You know, college athletics is an ever-changing world, and the Flying Tea Club is keeping TCU ahead of the curve. The Flying Tea Club is the TCU name, image, and likeness collective, helping TCU student-athletes make a positive impact in the Fort Worth community. Whether it's making big plays or enhancing the Flying Tea Club's support of local charities, TCU athletes are making a difference on and off the field. Get on the team today and make your tax-deductible donation at flyingteaclub.com. Let's keep winning at flyingteaclub.com. Hope Farm is an after-school mentoring program for boys growing up without a father at their home. From elementary school to college or vocational study, our boys discover a home away from home at Hope Farm. Fatherless children account for 71% of all high school dropouts and 85% of all children who show behavior disorders. Hope Farm believes there is positive potential in every child and provides intentional programming that includes mentoring, academic study, and a hot meal every day after school. Find out more at hopefarmfw.org. There are those who see the world through a different lens, who take risks, who are willing to make a stand. Because trails, they aren't blazed by the timid, but by the bold. For 150 years, TCU has been creating the next generation of leaders to think audaciously, care compassionately, lead heroically. And now, it's our turn, our time, to lead on. Huh? I mean, Today's game games. is brought to you by you Progressive. See why over 28 million drivers trust Progressive to stay protected on the road. See for yourself at Progressive.com. 71 to 58. Dave Shook with you here inside the Maritz Studios as we take a quick check of the Coors Light scoreboard. Couple of finals to report. The annual 5 versus 12 upset finally in the books. Took a little while this year. But ultimately, it's 12th seeded James Madison that becomes the first 12th seed in 2024 to knock off a 5 seed in the opening round as the Dukes win for the 32nd time this year. This time taking out the Badgers from Wisconsin, 72 to 61 is the final score. James Madison now gets the Duke Blue Devils in round number two coming up on Sunday. And also a final score, top seed of Houston in the South region, an 86 to 46 win today at FedEx Forum in Memphis over Longwood as the Cougars advance into the second round where Texas A&M, the ninth seed awaits after they won a barn burner against Nebraska earlier on today and then also in progress another potential 12 over 5 upset in the making right now about three minutes into the second half where 12th seeded Grand Canyon the champions out of the whack have a four point lead over fifth seeded St. Mary's the regular season and tournament champions out of the West Coast Conference 35 to 30 is the score in that one as we send you back out to courtside in Indianapolis for the Horn Frogs Brian Estridge. Thank you much David you're right a lot of work to do for the Horn Frogs 746 to play in this one trailing at 7158 when you need care, you want it in Fort Worth. The team at Baylor Scott and White All Saints Medical Center standing by to help you from heart disease to cancer treatment to women's health and more. Learn more at bswhealth.com slash Fort Worth. Inbounds comes Osamore now. Utah State with the basketball. 15 on the shot clock. Osamore backing it in on Avery Anderson. They get some help from Micah Peavy. Martinez out front for three good. Yeah, this is just an uncharacteristic knocking down three game for Utah State. They've now made eight threes in this game. 74-58. Nelson gives it up now. Miller. Corner it goes right now to Peavy. Peavy baseline blocked by Isaac Johnson. Out of bounds. It'll stay with the Horn Frogs with 16 on the shot clock. 7-19 to play. Trey Tennyson is going to step in the game. This is probably the Frogs' chance to get back in this game. you got to get your best shooter on the floor and hope he gets scalding hot here. Getting Jacoby Coles back in the game as well, who's made a couple of threes in this game. Tennyson's one of three in this game, has yet to take a three. Inbounds coming from Jameer Nelson. Has to send it out front and false left steals it. 
False left. Working it in on Tennyson. Waits for some help. Through the double team, he works and scores. Yep, that was a... Uh, you could see the play developing right there. The easy pass in was to Peavy in the corner, who's got a frustrated look on his face right now in the corner. Just turned an easy pass and turned into a hard pass. It gets stolen for an easy layup the other way. Here's Peavy out front. One frogs are down 76-58. It's an 18-point lead for Utah State, their largest of the game. Miller for three. E-man, air ball, rebound, Peavy, follow underneath the basket, no good. Ends up in the hands of Jacoby Coles, who somehow scores. Yeah, frogs fortunate there. They're going to have to get stops now, and they can't they can't piddle around on uh, no on the offensive end of the floor either. They're going to have to get out in transition, try to get some points on the board quickly here because the clock's going to go against them very soon. Here's Nelson, gives it up now. False left, working on PV, left hand side it comes. Between the circles, Brown. Eight on the shot clock. Brown, three out front. That one doesn't go. Johnson pushed down Nelson for the rebound. Foul here on Utah State. But you can see the Aggies were content to burn a lot of clock there, too. No, oh, no doubt about it. They they're gonna try to shorten this game now. And if that one would have gone for Brown, that would have been a uh, I mean it's just kind of like you throw your hands up. What do you do with that yeah. one? That was just a tough shot. But Good, uh, good outcome here for the Frogs. Go, to, go back the other way here. Some chance to, to make some free throws without the clock running. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one situation right now. Jameer Nelson goes to the free throw line. Looks like they're going to go look at this. Not sure what the review is about. But Scott Brown is over at the monitor. It's a quick review. Put Jameer Nelson on the free throw line there. We just saw the replay here. Is a just a two-hand shove to the back. Yep. Free throw line, Jameer Nelson now. 6.17 to play. Nelson knocks it in. 76-61, 15-point ball game. Avery Anderson in for Trey Tennyson. Today is going to come in as well. Yeah, TCU doing a little offense, defense substitution here. Going to have to do this down the stretch here if they're going to get stops. Free throws good for Jameer Nelson. Made them both. 14-point ball game. Pressure in the backcourt. Frogs tried this in the first half a couple of times, and Utah State had success against it. Now, Osabor loses a handle on it, trying to bring it up himself, and let's see. Whistle blue. Did it go out of bounds? They got a one and one coming a for foul Anderson. Here. How about this? A foul on Utah State. And that, if that's on Osamore, that's going to be number four. And it is. That's a big, big uh, development in this yeah. game right here. And that all, all came about from Emmanuel Miller pressuring him from 94 feet. Picked him up. Free throw line goes to Mir Nelson. Knocks it in. Second free throw now for Jameer. Misses that one, tipped out by Emmanuel Miller. Frogs tried to save it, can't get there. Jameer tried to run it down. I think he saw that power aid. Yes, <laughs> right uh, bucket right behind there. He was he was about to go jump for it though. It bounced out for Aduje. In front of the TCU bench gets it to Brown. Pump fakes to get out of the double team. Gets it up now to Martinez with numbers. Martinez drawn to the rim and fouled by Ude. I don't know why that's a foul. Ude's allowed to go vertical right there. The guy tried to go dunk on him. He's standing under the basket and he went vertical. No? Let's see if we can take a look at it on replay. Boy, everybody on TCU got upset with the call immediately. Free throw line's going to go Martinez. Ian Martinez out of Costa Rica. That was a uh, very athletic opportunity there for Martinez. He came out of nowhere. Yes, I didn't. I didn't. I was not expecting him to try to contest him like that. His dad Henry was a longtime assistant at Utah. Was also a player and coach in Costa Rica for about 15 years on their national team. Free throws good. 
Uday whistled for the foul. Checks out. Jacoby Coles in for it. By the way, that is on Uday. Personal foul should be slowly corrected here. Number three, and it is, yes. Free throw good there for Martinez. And with 6.02 to go, it's 78-63 now. 15-point mark. Now front with it, Anderson. Anderson gives it to Coles. Forced down low to Miller, and it goes out of bounds, they say, off of Utah State. And the Aggies said, no way. And the coach for Utah State... Sprinkles going bananas yeah. right now, asking for a review. These officials are not having it tonight. They're letting guys play. Yes. And 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 very few trips to the monitor. We've seen a lot of games on TV the last couple days where guys have made like 15 trips, it feels like, to the monitor. Here's Cole for three. Jacoby, big three-pointer there, 78-66. The Frogs needed it. He's going to keep pressure in here, full court. 12-point margin. Uduje is going to bring it up now. All the way to the rim, lays it up and scores. A tough finish, though. He had to go to the left side of the basket and scoop it under with the right hand. Tough finish. 80 to 66. I thought I told you that one team was going to get to 80 tonight. You thought it was going to be TCU, right? I would have thought that. Yeah. Here's Nelson out front. Jameer between the circles gives it up to Kobe again. Coles working on Johnson. Looks for a cutter. Finds one at Peavy. Baseline got his man in the air. Blocked by Aduje. Got it black, back, back. Blocked again. And then take it away here by Martinez and a foul on Peavy. And Peavy saying that he was being held. On the way down. Utah State's just doing a really nice job. They're not nothing easy coming for the Frogs. No. And and it's really uh really frustrating TCU offensively here. Johnson's had a big game. They've got eight, excuse me, six blocks as a team now. Martinez is the free throw line. Now they're looking at, they're going to go to the monitor for something here. It appears maybe like some kind of a hook and hold. Potentially. I, and potentially, but it, but it could be also, it looks like Peavy was the one actually, as we see the replay here, Peavy might have been the one who was uh, was pulling down as he was going to the floor. Peavy got it blocked originally, and then Johnson blocked it as he tried to follow it. Martinez comes in for the rebound, and then Peavy just drags Martinez to the ground. Yeah, that, this could end up being a flagrant one on, on Peavy for yeah. the hook and hold, pulling him to the ground. It's a dangerous play. Review happening right now. Roger Ayers at the monitor. Look at the job that uh, Isaac Johnson has done. He's got three block shots. That's a career high. Yeah, he's, he's, he's putting career highs all over the board uh, in this game. I'll bet you six made field goals is a career high. Yep. They're going to rule this as just a common foul. 5.06 to play in this ball game into the free throw line now. We'll go Ian Martinez, an 86% free throw shooter. Frog's fortunate that was only a uh, common foul on PB there. Yeah. Martinez free throw is good. Martinez making his third appearance in the NCAA tournament. Previous two when he was at Maryland. It's West Virginia and Alabama. Second free throw is good. 5 6 to go. 82-66 now. It's a 16-point margin. Yeah, Utah State now 12 out of 13 from the free throw line. Coles for three again. Jacoby bricks that one. Miller with a rebound of the follow. Emmanuel missed it and the rebound tapped around again. There's Chuck. O'Bannon scores it. Yeah, Frogs showing a little fight there on the offensive glass, but everybody's got to pick up their man immediately and, and, and try to deny these passes. You, Frogs are going to have to push the pace and take some chances defensively here. Can't let Utah State continue to just bleed this clock. 30 seconds each possession. They don't have enough possessions left in the game. T does TCU. Jamie Dixon wanted a timeout and didn't get it. 4.30 to go. 
Brown working with it on Jameer Nelson. Down to five on the shot clock. Brown, 18-footer, jumper short. One and done, back the other way, come the Frogs. Here's Emmanuel Miller in the forecourt. Nelson bounces down low. Coles over Johnson, short, tapped around, controlled here by Martinez. Yeah, Coles, that was a shot that he, he can make. He just left it really short. We've got to be intimidated by the seven-footer, I believe. Yeah, I suppose, but, I mean, that's still a shot. He's, he's made that shot 100 times in his life. Brown with it. Bounces to Martinez between the circles. Big mismatch here. Nelson's caught on Johnson in the post. Utah State has not noticed it yet. Five of the shot clock. Martinez, corner, false slip. Two, one to the rim, lays it up and got it. Now yeah, that's, that's a clinic right there. And now Roger Ayers. I'm saying TCU didn't get the ball out of bounds. Like, I don't think Miller stepped all the way out of bounds, so they wanted him to get all the way out of bounds. So they ended up taking the uh, media timeout here under four. Yep, timeout here with 3.38 to play. I thought at first that Roger Ayers said timeout by TCU, but I think it will be the media timeout. We'll take it with him. 3.38 left in this one. 84-68, Frogs running out of time. Back we come after this from Home Zone Furniture. To be made in Texas means quality. And at Home Zone, we're proud to create furniture with premium materials, upgraded features, and stylish designs, all at the best price. And yes, made right here in Texas. Visit us today for incredible store-wide savings and 48 months with no interest, no down payment, and no minimum purchase. Our non-commissioned team makes it comfortable to browse, plus enjoy free ice cream while you shop. Visit us at any of our 13 DFW locations today. Home Zone, Texas-born, family-owned. The tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On Big 12 Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash Big 12 Sports. If you're looking for the definition of service, I'm sure Sewell's name is in the dictionary of service. I don't think there's a person that I've ever come in contact with that works at Sewell that wasn't the top of the top. There's nothing to compare it to. They take good care of me. I'm happy to drive a Sewell. Sewell Automotive Companies, a proud supporter of the TCU Horn Frogs. Visit us at Sewell.com. Sewell, obsessed with service since 1911. Ball game in Indianapolis, Indiana tonight. Side of this one, round one action. NCAA tournament, Midwest region. The Bronx are down 84 68 right now to the Mountain West Conference champion, Utah State Aggies. They won the regular season, lost in the semis to San Diego State. San Diego State, the lone Mountain West Conference team, by the way, with a win in the tournament. They got six teams in that are old friends of the Mountain West. Had some tough draws. We were a little underseeded, but right now Utah State looking at every bit of an eight seed. Well, we talked about, we talked about Utah State maybe being uh, a little underseeded at an eight after yeah. they won the regular season. We went through it at the beginning of the broadcast. They only lost one game to a team that wasn't a tournament team, right? Um, and they went through a, a, a very tough Mountain West uh, conference schedule and won the regular season. So you get an eight seed if you won the six bid league. That's a uh, that might be a tough uh, yes. tough tough draw there. And you know they got a couple of road wins in that league. Tough places to play at UNLV, one at Boise in overtime. That could be a difficult place to play. You mentioned that one team that they lost to that was not in the tournament. That was early on against Bradley, an overtime game. And they had all. I mean, these guys are all brand new. Yes, exactly. so they're all trying to just at that point in the season. You're still trying to figure out what you got. Utah State this year returned zero points. It's an amazing story. Zero points. Now, a little misleading because you had two guys who played together at Montana State for the head coach. Yeah. But still. And those guys are pretty good. They ended up being first team all league guys. Yeah. Kudos to Danny Sprinkle, though. He obviously did a nice job getting them to Montana State. Here's Anderson for the baseline short. Chuck, flying through was Chuck O'Bannon with the offensive rebound. Sends it back out front to Coles. 
Nelson with it out front now. 3.20 left. Jameer in traffic. Working on Sacco. Sends it back now to Chuck O'Bannon. Stops and pops for three. That one doesn't go. Rebound down Jacoby. Frogs, another opportunity. Cole's going to back it in. Turn around and score it here on Uduje. And another timeout taken by Jamie Dixon with 3.07 to go. Yeah, he's got one left in the back pocket, and he'll probably use it again here shortly. But it, the, uh, the Frogs got to get their defense set up here. Um, anytime the shot's going in, like guys got to be finding who they're guarding yep. like immediately. Did a nice job on the glass there. A couple of second chances on the offensive rebounds from Chuck O'Bannon and Jacoby Coles. Frogs trail by 14 right now, 84-70. And as you heard Colin mention, just one timeout remaining for TCU. Should there be a tie-up? Possession arrow would give the basketball to the Horn Frogs. Yeah, still too uh, too much time off the clock in between buckets here. Yeah. 31 seconds after they took possession to, to score. So Frogs have got they just got they got to go. You got to score quick, and then you got you got to get stops because they're gonna take the air out of this ball. Uh, very quickly here and, and bleed out 30 seconds every possession. Frogs won't have enough to get back in this game. Inbounds from Darius Brown. Quickly, false slip in the backcourt's going to get it back now to Darius. Darius up to half court. They get it across for Martinez. Just like that. Yeah, you're going to have to go. I mean, you got to run up and trap. You yeah. can't just let them dribble the ball out here. You got to force some action. Hope they miss. Martinez with it. It's a well-coached team, by the way, Utah State. Danny Sprinkle. And Dixon screaming at his guys. Somebody go trap him. Seven on the shot clock. The Duce in the lane. Jumper good. Yeah, and then they just burn, you know, 20-plus seconds on it right there. Come down and get another bucket. 86-70. 16-point ball game now. Nelson with it out front. Jameer with his head down with a left-hand block. Off it goes now to Brown. Puts it behind his back. Darius going to hold it. Run a little time here with 2.24 to go. You know, Frogs are going to have, I mean, you got to send somebody to come trap right now. You cannot let them just run off 20 seconds. Yet that's what's going to happen. Darius Brown just holds it out front. I mean, I'd, I'd rather they just go foul right now, put yep. the guy in line, and hope he misses. Yep. I mean, you got to do something. This is NCAA tournament game, right? Like, give yourself a chance. you got to have a lot of stuff go your way. I get it. Martinez fouled here with 2.3 on the shot clock. Yeah, but see, I and mean, then you foul with two seconds left on the shot clock. Now they're going to go to the free throw line. Running your whole 28 seconds off the shot clock. I mean, it's a yeah. perfect scenario for, for Utah State. Free throw line goes Martinez now. Aggie fans starting to feel it. They're going to get... Uh, the Purdue Boilermakers, the number one seed here, and really their home floor if they hang on here for the next 201. Free throw's good, 87 70. Be anxious to see if, if, if they can continue to shoot the way they did against TCU today. Shooting 56% from the floor, 42% from three, and 93% from the free throw line. They, they have. Uh, Picked apart this TCU defense today. Martinez makes the second. 88-70. Out front Coles. Jacoby. Strong to the rim. Missed the lay and tipped it up. No good. Miller had it. Sacco ripped it away from him. O'Bannon tips. No good. Finally, still loose on the floor. Tapped around a couple of times. And it's off into the hands of Utah State. Brown's got it now. 138 to go. Darius content to run some time. Frogs don't foul. Wave the white flag here to TCU. Down 88-70, Utah State's going to advance here, the number eight seed. Utah State's going to get their, uh, their walk-ons in the game even. Sacco catches to the left-hand side, lost the handle on it, and Frogs get it now. 1.15 to go. Jameer in the forecourt, now to Miller, feeds it off to Kobe, blocked. Out of bounds, so off of Utah State. <laughs> I mean, I'm giving all the credit in the world to Utah State right oh, yeah. there. They're up 18 with a minute to go, and they still got guys protecting the rim. Nothing easy coming Landon, for the Frogs. Landon Brenchley is into the lineup for the first time. 6'4 sophomore out of Providence, Utah. Out top with it is PV, left-hand side. Nelson Jameer, baseline, reverse layup. Got that one to go. 88-72 and a timeout taken here by Jamie Dixon with 58 seconds left. Frogs are down 16. Going to be difficult here to make this margin up. With 
58 seconds left. Yeah, you almost think that this timeout might be to get a couple guys in the game that otherwise might not. I imagine Utah State will get a few guys in the game that, does, that don't play a lot. Right. One oh one left. They did add a couple of seconds back to it. Well, the Horn Frogs, unless they can pull off a miracle, are going to finish this year twenty one and thirteen. History making third straight trip to the NCAA tournament for the Horn Frogs. Last two, they advanced to the second round, unable to do that here this year. Utah State looking at their 28th win of the year. They've been in the postseason now in the NCAA tournament for the last six years, 12 times since 2000. Utah State's played in the NCAA tournament. That's, that's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they get guys to come play there. Baseball pass here on the inbounds, intercepted by Nelson. Gives it up now to Avery Anderson. Anderson with it. Avery in traffic. Kicks it off right-hand side. TV for three. That one doesn't go. Brenchley with a rebound. Brenchley in the backcourt. Hands it off now to Brown. 45 seconds left. Utah State's going to get the win. Frogs back off. Brown just dribbling it out here. Down to six on the shot clock. Four. Alley oop here. Going high was a Duje. Couldn't get it. And the rebound down to Anderson back the other way. Well, that'll drive a coach absolutely insane right there. You get a guy potentially hurt on yep. that play. You got you send your guy. He's got his hand. Look, he's grabbing his elbow. Yep. TCU loses it out of bounds on the other end. Jamie Dixon waves everyone off. Utah State with an upset. Their substitution is Nigel Burris going to get in the lineup. And it's tough, you know, it, looking at this game here, tough for uh, for TCU to win, giving up 88 points. You know, not counting the, uh, the the triple overtime game against Baylor where they gave up 102. Yep. Only one other time this season did they give up 88 points, and that was a loss to Nevada in Utah, Hawaii. Utah State's going to run this clock out. They're going to advance to round two, get an opportunity to take on the number one seed of Purdue Boilermakers. Tell you what, if they shoot the ball like they did tonight, they might have a chance. They're going to have a chance, no doubt about it. And they're going to have to uh, figure out something to do with, with Zach Eady that he's a yes. load down low. I don't know if they've got uh, – Johnson can knock down enough threes out on the perimeter and pull him out from uh, from underneath the basket, maybe. Horn Frogs finish the season at 21-13 and 13 in what could be the final game for several of them. We know Emmanuel Miller and Chuck O'Bannon. But you got Jameer Nelson and Avery Anderson and Micah Peavy. Among others, Trey Tennyson, Isam Mustafa, Xavier Cork, and Jacoby Coles. May have played their last game as a horn frog here. Falling 88-72, the final score. As Danny Sprinkle and the Utah State Aggies advance to take on the Purdue Boilermakers. Our wrap-up show starts next. After this local timeout of the Horn Frog Sports Network from Learfield. The TCU Frog Club brings generous and loyal supporters together in support of more than 500 Horn Frog student athletes. Frog Club donors help TCU athletes reach their fullest academic and athletic potential through philanthropic investments in Utah State 88, TCU 72. It's over here in Indianapolis. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield. We'll kick off your post-game show next. Want to set yourself apart from the competition? The Leadership MBA at Utah State University will help you drive change in your organization. You can attend in person in Logan on Thursday evenings or take interactive online classes. Complete your MBA in as little as a year. Contact the MBA office to waive the $55 application fee. Learn more at utahstatemba.com. That's utahstatemba.com. The Utah State MBA is a proud supporter of Aggie basketball. It's time for a wellness tip from Intermountain Health, official health sponsor of the Utah State Aggies. Do you ever notice an elevated heart rate when attending an Aggies game? Here's something you might not know. What do you expect? You're one of the many screaming members of the herd. 
heard. If your heart rate isn't through the roof, you aren't trying hard enough. Be loud. Be proud. Be heard. That being said, keep an eye on the old ticker. You can't be an Aggies fan without it. Learn more at intermountainhealth.org. Sign Pro is a proud supporter of Utah State Athletics and the preferred signage partner.